yo it's chill monger it's brian the grizzly spoiler kings is in the building and we are here to talk about t'challa it's t'challa time extended edition you know how long this video is gonna go i don't know yet but it's gonna go very long we're just chit chatting about uh the, the black panther and uh just before we hit record we were talking about the exceptional x-men and uh, the new like kind of i don't know relaunch you said you were excited brian yes and dr ewing is as we see now she's a storyteller she's a world builder she i don't know if she's necessarily great for a short runs because marvel's doing a lot of short runs but if this is going to be a long run i think she's a perfect person because she's respects everything that's happened before but she tries to put it in a different direction so i'm very excited about her doing these things specifically um i'm actually a little bit more dis disappointed reading this this 10th comic realizing that i think she really would have had something going um <laughs> I think that she really she had five more issues. She just should have shouldn't have taken so long having those things without T'Challa, having the issues without T'Challa. She probably should have kept the story going a little bit faster. But I think she would have got got there when she where she wanted to get. I understand she kind of put the him on a path. You're going to be king. You're going to be like even when you bring bring in Baku back, you're like you're like oh call him. Yo, know, hey, dude, this is who he is. This is who you are. Just took too long. They called him the emperor here. Yeah. And it was like one little well, panel right. where that happened. And I was like, you know, this is like, he's just like, when you, you know what do you call when you take a shortcut and you supersede the prime minister and the, and the, all that stuff? He's just going straight to the, the top, right? And um, Intergalactic Mbaku treats him as such. And I'm like, yes, yeah, so I'm talking about. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not what I was asking for. I was asking for making him the king again. But yeah. this kind of makes him more than the king again. And it's like it was a very the entire good empire. It, it empire. Instead of just we're looking at small potatoes, Wakanda, well, Wakanda is now an empire. So now you can have the whole Colts run come in into to play, all the stuff. So now you can even get multiversal. You can do a lot of different things with it. Ooh, ooh. So when we think about the kingship and all that, that's small potatoes. It's like, I man, you know, I got like four colonies, and we could all just undo what's going on in earth wakanda if we wanted to we could just have all the forces unite and you know he t'challa allows for t'challa for wakanda to go on with the full of shade he's, he just wants to see what happened you know let me just see there's no real consequence though because all he's got to do is he's going to pick up the phone and say intergalactic mbaku let's intergalactic take over and let's have an intergalactic coup well, I think it's even cooler because you could bring, you know, Blue Marvel into the story. You could bring bring Monica Rambeau into the story. You could bring Aurora back in, into the story. But a lot of these same things, you could um, bring bring the right Captain Marvel in. There's so many things that you can really do with that storyline. It opens up the entire world, and a lot of Colts run because I mean, Colts is probably the, done more comics for Black Panther than. He did fifty, yeah, like um, because he he did all the inter intergalactic. He did all of volume five and six. And I think it's five zero. I think there's fifty <laughs> comics all that's, by him. That's a lot. Yeah, Priest I mean, especially when, when it's a big portion when you think about because it, it's really huddling. Um, you think of, I mean, of course, Kirby, whatever you got. Um, McGregor, uh, Gillis uh, did volume two. Um, you talking about McGregor? Yeah, McGregor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So there was there was um him, Jungle Action. I don't know if you can even count that. Uh, jungle Action. I, I collect them, but yeah, I don't know. Do they count to the legacy numbering of two twenty two? No. No. Because some of Jungle Action doesn't include. You no, know, there's other other heroes there in Jungle Action. So the one for the first four comics, it's Kazar. Yeah. Exactly. And then I think Jaguar is one of them, oh. three of them. Um, so yeah, but yeah, I mean, you got the Priest Run, that's Volume Three, I think. Mm -hmm. And Hudlin and then Colts takes a, a huge chunk and uh, does a lot of different things. Some things I didn't like, some things I did, but I respect they did. And it seems like Doctor Ewing respects what Colts did because I mean, even bringing that in into this this one highlights where she wanted to go. Okay. What do you think? I want to hear what you think. I just don't. 
I, I can't consider this as much as the other runs. I was listening to Mark talking about it. Mark, Mark from uh, not back of the bus. That's Marcus. Mark from ATL Blurred. I was listening to him chat, chit chat about it. Um, and not to misquote him, so I'll just quote myself. I don't think this was the greatest run of Black Panther, okay. nor was it ass. It was just in that middle. I mean, and it's just because we only had ten comic book issues to 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 do what we needed to do. Buckmeister, cool. What's up, Buckmeister? This may be the thing where he's got a lag. Oh yeah. yeah. What's up? What's up? What's up, James? Hey, good to talk to you. So yeah, we were talking about E viewing's run, and you know, maybe where would you rank it? Um. Yeah. What's up, guys? Hey. Uh, hey. Let me see. Ranking. 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 Okay. So for me, it's Priest, Hudlin, Jungle Action, um, Coats. I guess. Yeah, I put it. I put it below codes. Yeah, oh, it's definitely I put below, it below codes. codes. I think when you when you're comparing them though, because he who would, who should not be named uh, was so bad that when you know, compare he, he was, what she was to that, it's just like okay, she at least brings it back to normalcy, and then we we can extend from there. He, he I, was I, worse than he was worse than Kirby. Like Kirby's run is weird. But I would read that over and over again versus Voldemort. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like Kirby's run doesn't make sense sometimes because I don't know how we got to Samurais in the water and how T'Challa has to walk across the desert. But I'm like, I'll read that any day over. They have clones whatever was running, happening. running around. There's a lot of different things that Kirby did that was like really yeah. strange. At one Do point, still... T'Challa had ESP. <laughs> Do we still have the stench? Of you know who over the Black Panther is because at the end of this, yes, I'm gonna go back to Bernin Zana. I think you still have the stitch because he's not king till you uh, undo the, the the biggest crime you could do in, in a comic book. I, I I don't know how he still kind of lingers over. Doesn't mean like he's the most recent, but it's something that you always have to keep in mind because of what he did. So full of Shade represent. I think, I think um the, the, the fact that she does say um you know she does bring up the whole emperor thing at the end. There is a there is like a okay, we are moving past that. Like we are remembering that you know T'Challa isn't just like this whole Batman phase, it just isn't it it just isn't a thing. Like there is like the intergalactic emperor thing that's still happening. So at least she did take a step in the right direction. It's just that she didn't go all the way. So hopefully the next person decides, okay, we changing the status quo now. We're not doing this anymore. Because Eve gave them a way out. Yeah, the way that Shuri was talking about how, yeah, I'm in the capital city. I got to be hiding and I can't, I can't be too public about it. Painted the leader in a bad way. That mm. is a character who, um, Dudu had, created for in follow shade that is still there we saw akili be supported by this new prime minister follow shade we're not supposed to look at follow shade in this like nice way if if let's just say this is a long-term building for a black panther villain and that's what follow shade will do she will when she loses her power she'll turn into i don't know some sort of villain who's got powers or we'll learn that she's got this like Jedi ability to kind of, you know, or manipulate Koro Matsukame in the five Kage summit. She was, she was there. And then someone with a, with a Byaku gun discovered, Oh my God, you're trying to manipulate the, the boardroom. You know, like we may have something going on like that with full of mm -hmm. and boom, just like that. <laughs> nice Naruto, nice Naruto reference. <laughs> um, Naruto reference. Yeah, um, I think like what you did the, the something with Kivu, like uh, idea like Kivu Ma, like when she got brought with that Kivu Ma thing, like another mm -hmm. spirit is taking over, and that's really the real villain. But you still know about it. No, I don't think don't do spirits. I think let's keep it full of Shade because I think you know spirits is always nebulous. I think it's better to have a villain with a face. And if I was writing it, I would probably make Fola Shade. If I was writing it, I would make Fola Shade like a Chebe's girlfriend or something like that. Like it would have been a long play by him 
using her to using her to downplay T'Challa or whatever because he's always been in the background trying to manipulate things. I would have like because I would have you know it would have been like some sort of pawn of a Chebe scheme or something or whatever. Yeah, I like that. I like it. I don't know. It, here's my issue though. I, I think about the other run. What you know, you should not be named. Having such a long run, it always will linger over, and that's why this had to be almost as long as we really needed to support it because it needed to be at least as long to try to undo some of the stuff. So it being short really hurts. I mean, like I said, Gillis doesn't even get thought of because it's only a four issue run, volume two. Like some writers kind of get just swept under the rug because of, you know. The, the oh, that one was a good one where T'Challa fought um, Bast because yeah, um, Bast, yeah, he was yeah, fighting. Yeah, because, yeah. That that was, yeah, for four runs, though, that was amazing. I, I, I It really was only four like issues, so it, yeah. it, everyone forgets about it. So when yeah, I talk yeah. about volume two, people are like, what the hell is volume two? Like, yeah, it, mm. it, it was really good storyline, you know, but mm. you lose it when you don't have the issues. She tried her best to undo many of the bullshit that we've been living with because returning to Bernzana when he's supposed to be outcasted, when he's not supposed to be the Panther anymore, uh, also he wasn't an Avenger anymore. Some of these things were erased, some of these things quicker than others, but at least some of that stench is being chopped off and now the character will return to glory. Um, Yeah, I think she left him in a better place I just think that she was too much of a writer, if you get what I'm saying. She wasn't like a comic book writer. She was like, like it, it, it felt like, if you know, like a novelist. You know, it's like, okay, we have to keep this continuity and build off of the story that came before. Whereas like, if somebody like Brian Hill came in and he was writing 616, you know, he would have just knocked just all of that. <laughs> just threw it all out and said, all right, whatever. Just started <laughs> Maybe. I'm speculating. I mean, Chill is right. I don't know, but I'm saying in my mind, that's what I think Brian Hill would do. Because I'm saying, like, when she did do the interviews of it, she was saying that it's not good writing to just knock everything out that came before. You have to build a story. And that's what I believe she said in one of the interviews. I don't know if I'm misquoting her, so somebody can correct me. No, that's kind of basically what she said, yeah. Yeah, but I'm saying that I feel like as a comic book writer sometimes, especially when you know a property's in bad shape, you have to just kind of, like, okay... We can't do this anymore. Like, for example, um, um, what this? Not, not, not that this is the best example, I think, but like the return of Bruce Wayne, I think, or whatever, when Batman died, or whatever. Like, you know, for a fact, like when they when they brought him back and did all of that, um, he was wearing a weird suit at some point or whatever. But basically, when they brought him back, it was like, okay, yeah, Batman never died. Batman is back. Batman is Batman now, or whatever. Or even when they broke his back. And he had to come back and fight the former Batman or whatever. They basically healed his back with some weird magic and, <laughs> and basically said that Batman is not crippled anymore. And he yeah. and he went and beat up a, he went and beat up Azrael. And then Azrael had to like run away or whatever. I don't I don't remember the particulars of the story, but I know Bruce Wayne beats up the 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 false Batman and proves that he's Batman again. So, like, the writers didn't do this whole thing where Batman had to go through, like, physical therapy and he had to, you know, like, they just decided magic heals his back and now he's Batman again. (laughs) Yeah, we're in a comic book. We could do whatever the hell we want. But uh, unlike a broken back and unlike some of these story points, I recognize what he did as anti-black racism. I say that with a dead face, with no Mm. smirk or anything. And Mm. to maintain that for 10 comic book issues rather than Let's just write away that and go do a do a Black Panther story because you could have had the burning T'Chaka storyline where like oh let me see what the subjects are doing down in that city you know and now all of a sudden he's back to he's he's at the place where he's like I was gonna call Burning Zana home but instead I'm just gonna call it Burning Zana not home you know that because this is all home type thing that message could have got the mm. same message across we just could have had the remedy in the first issue and mm. and, and Bob's your uncle because I, I I I like I started the sentence. That was some anti-black racism that we just had to experience and endure, and it, mm. it was up, up, up. It was kept up and kept with that status quo up until we get to the emperor stuff happening in this comic book. Nah, we was, yeah. What'd you say? Yeah. We were waiting for this for such a long time, and just took too long. I feel like I, I was talking to my uh, comic book guy that I go to, and he he was saying, you know, you Doctor Ewing probably should have did a better storyboard. She should have realized 
did her storyboard, realized I need to make these changes in the first in her iteration, which is the first five comics. She should have made the change. If you can do this in the story, you do it within five comics. So then, you're, then you focus on your comic on the next five. Because if you do it that way, then you're you're most of the time Brian you're Hill. going to have another five. Look, Brian Hill, his ultimate Black Panther. We already decided we liked it off of issue number one because of what it was putting in place. Can't say the same thing with with this one. With this one, it was like, oh, let's, I'm curious to see what the city is about. But I mean, to be fair to her, because I mean, you know, everybody like looks at Tanya. No, don't Coates be fair to her, like... Buckmeister. Don't be unfair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm saying to be fair to her, everybody looks at Tana Hesse Coates' run. And I mean, like that first one, Nation Under Our Feet, I get what he was doing and I did find it inter interesting, but there is things in there where you're just like, okay, why are you doing this? And it's just it like, because, time. yeah, because like Coates wasn't a comic book writer. He only really found his stride like halfway through that run. And then when we get to the Intergalactic Empire, that's when it really like kind of kicked off. But there's like a time where it was like a really there's like some growing pains where you do see that he did read the books, but he is like he's pulling things and extrapolating things. And it's just like you're misremembering events here. So like with her, she wasn't originally a comic book writer from what I understand. Right. Yeah. But she's done like she's done four series. series that she could have done. Yeah. She's done enough. Yeah, I mean, I mean, um, the I, I remember reading her photon run. I thought that was OK, but like it was also short and. You know, there was like some. And things she didn't fix like, the problem with Photon. That was the other thing. Well, another another yeah. one, she didn't fix the issue with Photon. So. Yeah, uh, and they broke up her and Adam Brashear for some reason. <laughs> okay, um, but it was, anyway, it was almost I, like she had to be focusing on. Um, I fixed myself before I could be with someone else. But when you are a strong couple, sometimes you want to have strong black couples to be together. Bro, the majority of the story took place outside of regular reality. We didn't even need to have a breakup. We could have just had yeah. a story just about her. About it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what were you going to say? Though? Your, your thought was is she's a new writer. She's a novel writer, not a comic writer. But where were you going with that? Anyway, I was just saying that maybe if this was her fourth, like, is this her third comic book? Is this her, like, is Iron Heart Champions, third? Photon, maybe three like issues of Marvel team up? Yeah. Oh, okay. I feel like she did one more thing. Uh, anyway maybe 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 if the run went a bit longer or maybe if this was like her sixth uh you know comic book that she was writing maybe she would have recognized these things that we're talking about uh, talking about so i don't know like i don't i, I don't want to hold that too much against her but at the same time yeah maybe if somebody did you know maybe if there was like a consultant maybe if the editor actually did his job <laughs> and said hey <laughs> this character's in bad shape maybe she would have done something different Maybe he was just like, you know, do do your thing. And then she went and did her thing. And now the comic book is only 10 issues. So, you know, I, like as much as Eve is at fault in a, in a sense for not, you know, coming out the gate as she should have kind of thing. Again, it's like editorial as well. Because unless you're like a Hickman or a Brian Hill or whatever, where you recognize things are not where they're supposed to be. Like, you're going to do something, like, you're going to do your job. You're not going to go that extra mile. Like, Brian Hill with Ultimate Black Panther, he's going that extra mile where he's like, yeah, things need to change around here. Same with uh, same with Hickman and Spider-Man. Like, Ultimate Spider-Man is happening because where Spider-Man is in Amazing, Spider-Man fans are not happy <laughs> at all. Mm. I don't know. I, I think it's easy to do with an Ultimate series, though, because you basically... Retcon everything from the past. So you, there is no past. When you're doing a legacy comic, it's a little bit more difficult. Um, I, I, I blame her more because I look at the, the letters, letters at the end of the, the comic, and you, if you're reading what everyone's saying, the people that really enjoyed the most seem to like the, that, the, run, the previous run. And that's why I was like, because she gave us too much respect to it. And when you really start reading them, like I'm looking at these letters like, oh, wow, oh, you, you appreciate what she did. You appreciate this. Damn, I, I, I only read some of the letter section. I did not see that. Oof. So, like, I'm, I wish I could read what one of the ones said. Uh, I'm the, I don't want to say his name, but yeah, I am uh, a, a fan of it and I appreciate what you did with it. And let's see if I can find it while we're looking. Brian, they're not going to post the letters that say you, you ruined the character. <laughs> <laughs> This sucks. That's not gonna make it in. 
I don't I don't think it would make it out. I think I think the feedback exists online, like my YouTube channel, um, mm. Reddit, Twitter. Mm. If she's looking for feedback, all she has to do is go to the search bar on every social media site and say Black Panther or or T'Challa and see what's going on. Hey, what, what I I created a brand new character, Besa. What's the feedback? And she would see what she would see. That makes sense, especially nowadays. I hope, I mean, I hope they don't toss that character to the side. Yeah, that character was kind of fun. I hope they do do something with her. But like, yeah, I think the next issue just be T'Challa focused. Like, maybe give Basa some mini series somewhere where she has her own focus. And what world do you live in? What uh, a supporting <laughs> character of Black Panther is gonna have a mini series. It's I happening. Only had ten issues after the movie. Shuri had it. That's it. Yeah. Shuri's yeah. had a couple of mini series. Like, be Killmonger had it. Uh, right. Walls had it. one. Yeah, <laughs> Alls had, had them. I have three of those. Mbaku, Mbaku, had, Mbaku had Mbaku one as had well. Had his own. I well, Mbaku I don't know the the, the, the reimagined the reimagined Mbaku because I don't know like when I'm reading into Galactic Empire, I'm just like, so he, did he just reincarnate everybody through other people? Because it's kind of no, it's kind of whose weird, idea was know. naming these characters what they named them? <laughs> these names are taken. Mbaku is a person already. And we never need a new one. This is a great opportunity to use another one, another name. But it's so yeah. complicated, everything. Because I have to, if you have to explain to a new fan who who this is, oh, it's not, it's not really Mbaku. It's like two thousand years Mbaku from the past and the future. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the yeah. Past and the future. That's exactly right. No, like Nakia. I don't know how to break. I don't know how to square that circle anymore. <laughs> the names it's, are off. It is, it is confusing, though, isn't it? Like it's. It's almost as convoluted as the X Men series, like what they've done with X Men, because you, you know you have some people that are dead, some people are alive. You have multiple characters that are both alive and dead at the same time in different runs. It's it's getting to that point, or it's been to that point, really. Oh well, anyway, then you you just chuck it up the comic books because you're like at some point, sometimes these things don't make sense. You're just like, yeah, all right. <laughs> Like the Batman first... didn't die, he became an omega bomb that threw time and he got spread through reality. And in one reality, he was a pirate, and the other reality is a caveman. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have a caveman run. You're right. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, but who are you worried about that? The who's gonna take the, the baton and run with it? Who's gonna be able to, to get us where to we need to get to next? I don't know. I need a I need a I need a fan. I need a Jason Aaron to write the next. <laughs> I need somebody who's just going to do like crazy cool, even if it's like nonsensical, ruining continuity. It doesn't matter. Like it just needs to be like off the wall. T'Challa's a badass for like 12 issues. I I personally think that's where they need to go. Like I do want a good story, yes, but I think right now we need some I'm because I'm Batman type energy. You know where Batman is doing things and people are just like, he can't do that. He's like, but he did it though. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, I, I was wondering, personally, I was wondering if it's possible that because Marvel's going to all mini series, everything Marvel is releasing now is because they, they want to have new number ones all the time. So someone has to jump in that's going to be willing to, first off, fix what they want to fix immediately. And get the story, the ball rolling from the jump, because you know you don't know you might only have five issues to do it, and then mm -hmm. if they do it and it's successful, they'll let you continue to go. But you go on with another story, another story, and you stack yeah, on top. If of they it. know it's going five, it's very rare it'll get extended to ten. I have that might have happened with Champions with the Danny Lore ex extension, but that's very rare that that'll ever happen. You've been mm -hmm. seeing it though. Every store, every yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. If if it, if if they do right for trade and it like it does kick off, I can see exactly what Brian is saying, because maybe that's the point. Maybe now you just have to accept that you don't have a long-standing run. You're always gonna just have like five like five issue chunks type of thing. So as a writer, you have to be like, okay, I gotta have a five issue arc, five issue arc, five issue arc, five issue arc. Maybe and then also maybe if you weave in the arcs together. Like you know, like you write around the, the the limitation. Maybe that's the best way to do it. So maybe if you're having ten issues, like maybe the next one is also another ten issues. Then the guy has to have two arcs within those ten issues, hey, type of thing. Instead of having the one out, arc, that's the ones that work out. The ones that no, I only got five issues to do a thing. Do a thing. 
keep everyone interested. And then the next one, if I if I'm going to get extended for another five issues, I'm going to do something else because I'm going to get started. We'll go to the arc. And but it wouldn't finish. be called number six if they get extended. They'll just say, "Okay, your issue five comes out in May, but in June will be issue one of Black Panther: Colon something else." Yeah, and then you just have to do the Jack Kirby Stan Lee thing, where I mean, Eve did it throughout this run, which is which was I I did appreciate that. But basically, you just have to do that. Read this previous run or whatever, or like True Believers, go check this out. And basically just have people go back to the previous run and all of that stuff to to keep buying it and everything like throughout the issue as you're telling the story if you don't know where this came from go read this or whatever mm -hmm. i think like that's how you would have to play that to make sure that people are still interested in keeping you know the run alive type of thing look at brian hill working on blade for 10 comic books here mm -hmm. comes the blood hunt event which is a uh, time to stop but he'll do midnight suns for what four comic books yeah and four, then right. when this is over he's going to be doing more uh even though that's not confirmed he'll be doing more comics with the blade character but i'm sure that will begin with number one well mm -hmm. we if we combine it all that's gonna, probably going to be 20 comics in total but three times they stopped and breaked so that they can give you a number one issue which would be you know over ordered by your comic book shops and yeah. that's what the, that's the business that the, these uh the industry is the business is making you over order issue number ones incentive incentives and stuff it's it's just a game spoiler king um, said what oh it must, it must be tank <laughs> yeah i was like bro you here <laughs> the spoiler right. king is here <laughs> you beating us anyway yeah, I mean, again, look, the industry is the industry, and there's a lot of weird practices that do need to change. But I think for now, you just got to play the game. Because if you don't play the game, then you don't have a comic book. And yeah, I think, if, if like, getting T'Challa means that it's going to be through stopping here, but at least we get the blood hunt for three issues with Cheryl Lynn Eaton. And then at least maybe in the future, there'll be another B Black Panther related thing. But a month after blood hunt is over, if that's the way I'm going to get the chunks of T'Challa, I'm going to support it because he's the Chala. There's no other character I'm doing that for. Or Storm. There's no other character that I'll that I'll be doing that other other than Storm. But you yeah. surprised like they, they don't do something like they do with Uncanny X-Men. Like when you do, you, you start a new number, but you could do, you know, legacy numbers in the corner. You know, like LGC number, like, you know, LCY or whatever. Like say, okay, but this is uh, really the continuation of the story, but this is still on, this is our number three, number four, number five, yeah. but it's really... Of, of the series because it's all together. They wouldn't do it for that little tie-in blood hunt thing. They wouldn't call it Black Panther 223. But like the next one, like say if someone's whoever picks up the ball and it runs with the next issues and it, it follows T'Challa right from here, yeah, right from 10, yeah. then you could say it's one, and then you say like this is a continuation of blah, blah, blah. Because like even when... In, That's implied. Even, it's implied. At, it has the character. It's the same continuity. It's the 616. Then we know. That is true. And, but you see, as I said, it has this right here, the two, number. Two, two. Yep, exactly. So you know, okay, there's 222 of the same type of character, same character. I have. think Legacy should only go to like on ongoing mainline. series and not limited series. I like if, it. if it's going to be a limited series, like the next five issues will be called Black Panther Return to Return to the Throne, and it's five issues, and it's written by some unknown. Yeah, let's not consider that part of the legacy numbering because we know it's only five issues. Yeah. I, I mean, this is really a, it's just a matter of numbers and preference, really. There's really nothing, no weight. Yeah, I, I, but I see what Brian is saying. You advertise it as a number one. You say everybody to this is a number one. And then in the little corner there, you just say, yeah, this is 223 or so something like that. So yeah. like anybody who's a collector will be like, OK, this is the 223rd comic with T'Challa as the main character. I'm going to get that. And so but they'll then, be inclined to watch it the same way that Star Wars Episode 7, 8, and 9 made you go, well, I watched 1 to 6. How am I going to not? Yeah, like, exactly. They say that they're going to make this yeah. new film with Ray, Episode 10. And that will make people go, well, I got to complete it because I saw the other numbers. Exactly. I skipped Rise of Skywalker. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Okay. Not my point. Not my point. But, <laughs> but no, I, I think that's what it is. I think that's also what uh, DC does. I think DC is doing a better job overall than Marvel. But I do feel that Marvel is, I mean, DC is eventually going to do the same thing because Marvel's sales on on really crappy marketing is higher because they continue to do these 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 one-offs, one-off. You know, I'm going to have another 
first issue again, another first issue again. So it increases their sales, it overinflates it. So I think though DC's doing I mean, it right right now, they might be falling right behind them. Yeah, I mean, what did Stan say? Was it Stan or Kirby? I can't remember, but like every comic is somebody's Stan. first comic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Something like that. So I guess that's the theory behind number ones. But you you know, yeah, I, I just think that as writers, you gotta you gotta just figure out your way around the system, so and everything. I mean, for this comic, getting back to number 10, it was a little bit rushed, I think. There's some stuff I did like. The Power Ranger suit I did come to enjoy. I just think that they needed to change the mask a little bit. Because I think that's where it lost me a little bit, where I was just like, okay, this looks very, very Wakandan Power Rangy or whatever. Like, that's the first thing I thought of. But, like, the rest of it is really cool. The rest of it, like, the bulk of it and everything and, like, a riot suit and all of that stuff. I liked that a lot. But, uh, and also, unfortunately, because it was rushed, Kivuma and T'Challa's, like, interaction and relationship, it's just like, yeah, I fought your grandfather and now I hate all Panthers. Like, that was basically... (laughs) (laughs) And I was like, oh... Like maybe the Imtelli, maybe the Imtelli issue should have been T'Challa focused, and then Imtelli in the background, um, you know, um, basically King of the Dead style, talking to T'Challa in his ear, Avatar, Avatar Roku, and you know, Ang style or whatever. Like maybe that would have been a better build up for Kivu Maz as, as and T'Challa's like animosity and relationship and all of that stuff. The way that the first, co- the ninth comic ended was one on one Kivu Ma T'Challa showdown. But the first page of this comic, I saw Basil over on the corner, and I'm like, "Oh my god, this is um, <laughs> this is not what's needed. You gotta have your superhero be so elite that alone that your superhero could beat this villain without any assistance or 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 or, or, or like uh, distractions." And I was like, "Okay, you were not here on the big final splash page a minute ago, okay? That this that was like already a letdown." But it didn't take it didn't what I thought and what I feared would happen didn't happen. This did feel like it was a T'Challa versus Kivu Ma villain. Mm. Just getting into that new suit, which I loved. And yeah, of course, I thought it was a Power Ranger suit uh, because it has the teeth. It reminded me of (laughs) yeah, it was was or it was one of those wild force like with the teeth right over the the visor type thing. Yeah, right. Now I I expected T'Challa to just be like, "It's morphing time." (laughs) (laughs) Wild access. Uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it 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 was rushed because it was rushed. The storyline, and that's kind of why my point is with the whole. You need to re have your storyboard. You should start your your first and your end, and then decide how many issues you going to have in the middle. If you know you only have five issues to get this point done, that means you don't waste one with with the child not there. Don't waste one. You know, he's trying mm-hmm. to explain the villain. You need to get going. You need to use the villains that are already there because you don't know how long you're gonna have. Mm. No, I mean, it, like Kivuma as a concept works because, like that that whole thing of the true. I mean, again, it is Hunter. Like somebody said, I remember. It, I think it was yeah. I think somebody uh, you don't know or something like that on Twitter. I'm I'm not sure. He did say like this is Hunter basically because it's the whole nationalist and and all of that stuff. But like Hunter's not the only nationalist. Like there's no way. I mean, you know, the Disturi were a thing. Or whatever. Maybe if Kivuma was the original founder of the story, that would have been something that could have been interesting. But anyway, the point being is that I think you could have established this threat and have this threat happen within like five issues or whatever. Like maybe instead of maybe instead of going the route of um, this guy is a, a spirit that devours people for the sake of devouring them because he wants to protect Wakanda, it could have been something where he wants to wipe out the current Wakanda because it's not honoring the the hierarchy or whatever. Mm. And he wants to kill everybody in uh, the parliament and everything and basically cause a lot of chaos because he's like, this is not how Wakanda is or why is the Wakanda a democracy or whatever. And then T'Challa steps in. And to why defend are your technological from... advancement <laughs> taken over by a child? <laughs> a child. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> and then he, yeah, yeah. And then he tries to kill everybody and T'Challa stops him. And then basically at that end of the issue five arc, now everybody's like, yeah, follow shade. You you suck. T'Challa, you're king now because you stopped the big giant monster thing. <laughs> oh, can you, you imagine know? that? He's like, ah, I would stop it. I'm just not the king. So <laughs> you guys got it. Go ahead. Uh huh. So uh, yeah, 
<laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm saying if you did something like that and T'Challa, like, because he's so selfless and he cares about Wakanda that much, he goes and protects the parliament that ousted him. Mm-hmm. And then you you do that type of thing. Yeah, I think that could have worked. But anyway, I'm brainstorming. I don't, I don't even know. Head. Even with the keep them on now, what they had, they should have been able to figure it out. I mean, I feel like there's four four or five issues where they're trying to explain Kivuma a lot. They're trying to explain, okay, this is what's going on. And then Kivuma had to have this huge arc of stuff, like, and it didn't matter. Like, you went through two different bodies, two different avatars. You didn't need that. You know, you mm. could have done this quicker. You, you could have. Mm. And then you could, you would have had, you know, five other, uh, other issues to do something else, to explain how T'Challa got back, gets back into his kingdom. Yeah, and have the yeah. same story. The same story could still work. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. And also, like at the end, I thought he was going to use the dust, or I thought he was going to get the dust that Mtelly used to to defeat. Because I thought that was the point of showing us the dust. But uh, I guess he, I guess they didn't have time to fit that in. Yeah, I, again, it's it's an Is okay the time run. restraints issue. Yeah, I I think so. I think she didn't have time to remember that she introduced the dust in the other issue. To, to stop the, don't, the jolly I don't think she didn't have the time to remember about a dust issue. I don't know. If the, all right, hey, that's your, no, no, that's your opinion. That's what we do, everybody. We gather a group of people and we get we offer opinions. All right, cool. That's what you think? All right. That's <laughs> fuck my yeah. I think okay. she, just, was, she was surprised that she didn't get five more. And she was like, oh, man, I got two issues to get this figured out. <laughs> so you think that like, they didn't tell her she was canceled until she seven. handed in the script Maybe of nine? I think she's handed in the script of seven. And she realized yeah. that, you know, I have three issues to get everything done. And, they had to have told her, yeah. Yeah. And then it's like, okay, so how am I going to get this all done in seven, you know, eight, eight, nine, ten? And she already had things going more. She probably took some parts of the story out. Mm. Yeah, I think Besa was undercut. I feel like, look, all right, we got to have some inclusion, so. That's why Besa all of a sudden appear, started appearing, even though this was supposed to be Kivumaz versus um, T'Challa. And then, uh, what's... Samari? Is that the name? So, Samari? Samira? Samira? I think it's when the, the Samira like reunion, just kind of just to skip over to the, to the ending, yeah. I thought it would have more pages, and it would be like, oh, yeah, this is okay. And, and, and then we would get to know more about who is Samira, yeah, didn't get that. Yeah, so that, I, maybe that was a restraint on on time. You see, I so maybe I'm saying the same that you're saying, Buckmaster. Cool. I, I am. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, like as we've all said, she was writing like she had time when she didn't. Like, and I think that's basically like the 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 not not the biggest problem with this run because again, I think she did too much build up. He did too much like world building, and she, you know, you needed to get to the point a lot faster than she did. But at the same time, it was like she was she wanted to craft a thing, and it's like, yeah, this needs to be McDonald's. This is not gourmet. Take your time in the kitchen as a chef. We need to, you know, we need to get to the point. We need to get to the good food quick, quick type of thing. But like at the end, at the end of it, I still think it was an okay run. I think she handled T'Challa's voice really well. T'Challa yeah. was great in the action and everything. The only thing I didn't like is that apparently Nightshade made the suit. I was like, I wish T'Challa made the suit. I he didn't like that line. Exactly. Yeah, he could have done that himself. You know, but anyway, that's a nitpick, you know, here and there, just because I'm in a sensitive space with T'Challa. And, you know, if you're on Twitter long enough, you're just like, man, they got to get everything right about T'Challa because these people on Twitter keep disrespecting T'Challa. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. Yeah, I, I think it was I think it was an all right run. I think it was an all right run. She she did a decent job. She didn't she didn't she didn't leave him in a bad space. She didn't do what the last guy did, <laughs> where we were like, what the hell is happening? <laughs> she definitely left it in a better place than there was. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And I want to see this suit more often. I want to see the um you know. Wait, well, now that I think of it, on the top left, he's not wearing the suit. Is he? No, Black so it, it happens in a couple oh. of panels where he's not wearing yeah. it, and then you turn around and he does wear it. And you turn you go, go again, he's not wearing it, and then he does again. So maybe this 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 page was repurposed, like that that art panel right there was repurposed. Like that was initially going to be the comic book cover, but then they're like, no, 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 let's change our like, our minds. And then he's like, oh well, I drew it, so I'm going to use it. Yeah, 
Uh, hey, as a person who's running to draw this stuff, yes, if you have something to repurpose, yes, because stuff is hard. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What does it say? Black Panther rain, and I see dusk, but there's like orange in between. Is that a word? Yeah, ra yeah rain, rain and, and dusk. dusk. Sorry, the, you both spoke at the same yeah, time. That's, oh, okay. The no, spear sorry, is ahead, an right? A. The spear is an A. So it's rain at dusk. Oh, I'm so stupid. Okay, yeah, it does say that, doesn't it? Mm. Uh, thank you, guys, because I was like, huh, rain, how the... Oh, rain at dusk. Cool. Well, they go to space, and um, a lot of panels, more so than usual. Like, every page probably had seven, eight panels, which is evidence that, you know, we're squeezing in as much story as we could to, to, to kind of... They're all nodding their head on the side, right? <laughs> Uh, we're, we're, we're trying to get it all in right now. Yeah. Hey. Which must have been crazy for the artist because I'm like, I have to do what? Oh, damn. <laughs> okay. I wouldn't be surprised if they had plans for more of these things. And since the story couldn't hold it all, they just stuffed all the art they had into these panels. That's that's what they were going to do. Instead of doing multiple pages of stuff and carry around great, carry along things, just put it all in there. Like, I don't know. You know, this was going to be three pages. It's one. Mm. I mean, it they still did. looks great, though. Yeah, they showed his intelligence. He could go to the computer. Beep, beep, bop, bop. Okay, this will take him a few minutes. It'll have bought me some time to separate myself from Kivu Ma, and now I can do what I got to do. Uh, because he put like a shield barrier, like a round sphere. Yeah. And and that's mm. intelligence there. I didn't hear Nightshade help him out with that. Yeah. No, again, that was just a nitpick. Like, I think, again, our issue is, is not how she handled T'Challa. It's how she handled the story. Like, how she handled T'Challa, she did a good job, I think. Like, if the, in that respect to the, to the character himself, T'Challa like, never had long periods where he's down and out. He never had long periods of incompetence. Like... And he's also putting pieces and things together. Like when he was figuring out the Nikisu family, he didn't take time with that. He knew where to go and who to hit and what and what, what. It was just that he had to figure out the city itself and how the people in the city are reacting to his actions and everything. In terms of the actual crime and detecting and everything, he was on it. So I think she handled him fine. Like her voice for T'Challa was solid. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, I think. So my problem overall with all these things is that they, they don't tell you how intelligent like T'Challa is. Like I think since the movie, T'Challa has been downgrading his intelligence. Like not understanding he's probably the eighth smartest person to ever live. <laughs> I say he's four personally. Like just from feats alone, I say he's four. I think he's creative. He has he's able to that's you know splitting hairs, but I, my point is that he's brilliant. You know, like, mm -hmm. and, but to really understand, but you don't do that with, you know, Mister Fantastic. You don't do do that with the, these other ones. You all, or Hank Pym, or you, you know, you you always highlight it. And I, I, I feel like that it hasn't been highlighted, especially since the movies come out. It's like, like he's a hero, but they don't put a. He's he's well rounded. He's everything. He's educated. He's yeah. he's built the labs. He's done all these things, and it's been. Kind of be swept under the rug. Again, Brian, the only reason that's a problem now is because they killed him in Wakanda forever. Had they not killed the character off, we, we wouldn't have be having that discussion. Like, but that's the even, issue. even comic books. So, ever since we've had that 2017, the comic books haven't highlighted it at all either. It goes hand in hand. Yeah. Yeah. You can I say mean, that. even in Ultimate, they're still doing the whole Shuri Tech Genius thing, which I know some people are not a fan of as well. So I, I saw Brian Hill say that. Just be, he said, yes, T'Challa is super smart. Also, I just didn't have the time to show that in a page. Let's not. No, no, no. I think, I think, it. yeah, I think, I think he's gonna do it. I think he's gonna do. It. I'm just saying, there's people who are just like, this is MCU runoff that I don't like. Again, I'm personally okay with it as long as T'Challa is not downgraded because they don't do that for like. Two people can be smart. It's not like like everybody in everybody in Marvel has a doctorate. Like even if you're a supervillain, you still have a doctorate, in like a PhD. Like I don't know who gave Doctor Doom his certification, but he is a doctor apparently. And same with Doctor Octopus. <laughs> like Yo, it yeah. sounds like when people tell me, "Oh, Kamala, she can't stretch." That's Mister Fantastic's powers. 
And I'm yeah, going to watch like, Deadpool what? and Wolverine who have healing abilities and they're in the same movie. Yeah. Enough guys. They're both going to get shot and the bullet's just going to pop out of their skin and it's going to be like, you have my healing factor. No, you have my healing factor. It's like, no. Is That's it, like saying like Batman and, and Nightwing can't backflip together. It's like, yeah, it's a, it's a thing. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But as long as you're still highlighting that T'Challa is that smart. That, yeah. I'm not saying you don't take it away from Shuri because T'Challa set her up. He taught her. Why would you do that with your sister? You would you would totally set her up. I do it with my kid, my, my, my sister. Like I, I will always set them up for success and show them how to do it. And then you can run. You can run with it. Shuri is brilliant. Don't get me wrong. Come on. You know, but don't forget where it came from. That's what I'm saying. Just, yeah. Yeah, don't yeah. don't lose that. Yeah, the man had two comic books so far. Let let Ultimate T'Challa do his thing, and this is not Ultimate T'Challa time. This is T'Challa time, regular. Yeah, this is yeah, this is regular T'Challa time. Um, Niobe, what? Uh, uh, and then he's like, yes, and you can see that he's got a body without a soul. And I went, shoot, soul. I don't like those sort type of stories. I actually do, I don't really even get what's going on and why in uh, well, I kind of like I kind of like I kind of like that part with Niobe and I'll explain why because it was hinting towards T'Challa's abilities again the magical abilities cuz he can track souls like that's part of that whole upgrade that he got with the King of the Dead is that now he can see mm. souls type of thing it's not just he can track your body or whatever he can actually literally track you know, your spirit that resides within you type of thing. So I thought that was like a nice little, okay, she remembers the King of the Dead stuff. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. I didn't see it that way, but I thought I was like, I thought it was weird. And the shortest possible time later, a witty headline and we get straight into what what we're supposed to get into we were on the routine patrol when you were when your signal came and we got here as soon as we could so that's how long it took everybody don't ask any questions all right it was, <laughs> you can never believe <laughs> it was at a reasonable amount of time to for kivuma to fight the barrier um besa was not killed by kivuma over on that side of the portal um and 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 he he got her quickly. Yeah, I mean, just a question though, and I'm and I'm and she she didn't have time to explain it anyway, so it's gonna sound like a nitpick. But it's just like, how did Kibu Ma build this entire space station where he's keeping the bodies? How? Um, did how? did did she? This question. It? Did I miss it? No. So in issue eight. I remember when uh, Monet was talking, they were talking about how they have connections intergalactic and the drug. It, it was it was when Baba Nikisu was still alive. He was the one operating the cartel galactically, in, right? The, in space. Oh, so he okay. Built, oh, OK. OK. So she did square that circle because I was a little bit confused as how to a spirit would make all of this stuff. And I mean, have still an avatar. But yeah, yeah. But even. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't realize exactly. how long. Well, when the spirit had. world, when the because there was an editor's note that said all this happened in the Dajalia, which allowed Kivuma to be free, and mm -hmm. all the Dajalia stuff that happened was a Coates event from like issue seventeen of yeah of, of not of not intergalactic, but of his uh, original original run. Yeah, so that's how long Kivuma has been using the avatar of Baba Nikisu to get all of this put together okay hey okay. that's a great answer uh, chill thank you <laughs> yeah cool no i mean I, I was not trying to like you know like how i got her i was just trying to like i was a bit confused for a second so i was like okay that makes sense all right, there you go. that confused me like the physical body of kivuma i thought it was all gaseous and i was always wondering how you're gonna do it, how you're gonna beat him no, no, it, there's a lot of smoke and gas surrounding and that's purple, but there is a physical material like like a Grey Wolf's exoskeleton oh, body, I'll say. There's a body that you can touch and I didn't get that feeling every other time I've seen him until this fight where I could kind of see some some tangible enemy to, to beat up on. Mm -hmm. I actually didn't get it at all. I didn't know if he had figured out a way like the suit had something that he could punch and then I until I really start to look at the panels 
I didn't understand how he was actually going to defeat Keep in Mind and how that was going to work. Really? Yeah, I, I didn't. I'm telling you. I, I'll find the page. I'll find a page that that shows um, the smoke is sort of just supposed to make you feel afraid. It's gas, and it's and you can hear his voice, but his voice isn't ever coming from the smokes. The, the, his voice comes from the mouthpiece area of of the body. But I think maybe that's another time thing. I think maybe she intended for him to be gaseous throughout the whole thing, but then you know she needed to try to defeat him. So. I mean, that's where I was thinking about the the dust stuff that Intelli used, and I mm. was like, maybe they're gonna bring that back or or something of that nature, or his King of the Dead powers is gonna kick in and Intelli's gonna explain who Kibuma is and how to beat him type of thing, and then T'Challa was gonna formulate the plan around that. But it's not the like again, like inconsistencies are a thing, and that's not the biggest inconsistency for me. I was just like, all right, whatever. He's physical now. <laughs> Pam says hello, gentlemen. What's uh, up? Chill, don't bump the table. Martin Bila. What, what does he mean? I bump the you, table? What bump? Is is that a flip on Rock the Boat? I don't know. <laughs> oh, that really pulled all this. They really pulled all this together. Hmm? Now he says, spoiler dude, what's good? Caught you slipping without your crew talking that Lion King-ish now. What does he mean? <laughs> You're muted. Muted. Lion King's like my favorite movie. And uh, so I talk, talk about that a lot. So Because I feel like it's a very good story. With, uh, the idea of it is like a king returning. And it's, it's in Africa. So, you know, it's, I always, you know, kind of I had the idea that he was a black guy, black man who lost his father, had to step into the, the shoes and all that stuff. And that's why I hated the live action one when they highlighted the, the the other ones and i thought that that was stupid because that didn't happen in lion pride so mm-hmm. yeah, i i have to go through a whole thing about that <laughs> here's the body of him and i think like the gray wolf aka kivu ma with the freaky little eyes and stuff mm-hmm. i think that i think that, that that that's like that muscular arm of kivu ma that mm-hmm. you could punch and touch if you wanted to yeah, like the also like if you look at like his chest and like the stuff coming out of the smoke, it looks more monsterish than smokeish yeah, type smoke, thing. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Okay, the composition of the panels is amazing, though. Like, I really like this art a lot. It's beautiful. Everything that they did was very beautiful. I mean, the color scheme works very really well. Um, I thought. Even the con- the connection between you know keep in mind Bost and all and all the they did a really good job of understanding where things were coming from, mm. um, and gave good respect to a lot of different things. I, but I feel like I felt I felt more coats in this issue than I felt from a lot of the other runs. I felt like they kept on going back to a lot of coat stuff. I mean, obviously they're the galactic, but just it's just a lot of little things that they were doing. It felt like she, maybe she liked Coats the most, and that now this is her last issue, and she was going. I'm trying to get back to that. Yeah, she is friends with him. Stuff, I thought that stuff was like solid. Like again, I do have my complaints. Like the biggest one with Coats was that he was blaming T'Challa for things that were not his fault, and like making it obvious. Like I know that other like you know people have pointed out before that uh they did that in other runs. Like if you look at for example Jungle Action, like. Yeah, um, what's this? What's this? Wakabi is like saying that T'Challa is not invested in the realm all the time. That's why the realm is like this. Hence, blaming T'Challa for joining the Avengers and all of that stuff. And it's like you've been to, you've been with the white men for too long. You've been away for too long, T'Challa. Like that. That was a thing in Jungle Action. I, but I like, like men did it. Priest did it. I mean, all of them kind of blame T'Challa for a little, for little things. I don't think priest. I don't think priest blamed T'Challa for anything. I think. Priest, like, kind of, he brought it up through Killmonger, yeah, type of thing. But like, he was just like, that was just the, that was just the, uh, sorry, that, yeah, the villain uh, being that that way. Yeah, that was just the villain being that way. Like, I don't, I don't see that as like it was Chachala's fault type of thing. Because remember, he was like, your dad died, and I, and I got screwed. And Chachala was like, yeah, well, that's a life wasted, dude. I didn't, we, <laughs> we weren't there. But um, 
Yeah, I don't think, yeah. But anyway, getting back to Coates just for a second, I think like when he was like, oh, the like everybody found out that he was working with Namor, he was keeping secrets and, and yada, yada. And it was just like, you do know that he did this to save reality. <laughs> like, I like also, this. But Coates has 50 issues. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so yeah. you're going to find fault in 50 issues. So, I mean, sometimes. But I mean, he's the most consistent like writer of 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 any of them like i i, I don't think that he is no 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 um if, if coach had 50 priest had 60 priest had 60 yeah. no, i'm looking at it right here you're right yeah priest, yeah yeah 62. i'm looking at it right here. Priest had 62 i know hudlin had about 30 and then jason aaron wrote the last uh he had 38 or something and jason aaron wrote like the last few issues because Jason so, yeah, Aaron Hudlin did had forty one, but yeah, Jason Aaron yeah. ran forty one. Yeah, it'd be in thirty eight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jason Aaron wrote that. Uh, Welcome to Wakanda. Died doing a secret invasion storyline. <laughs> That's what I remember. A uh, fake nerd. See Wakanda and die is what it was called. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all I know is Wakanda's were killing scrolls. That's all I need to know because I actually bought it and read it. <laughs> Jason Aaron uh, just came in at the end, and I think so. That's a weird thing. So in, nowadays. Um, the equivalent would be okay, Ewing's done at 10, but Cheryl Lynn Eaton will get 11, 12, and 13 because yeah, that's exactly. what Jason Aaron did with Sea Wakanda and Die. They just said there's a built in audience who are already buying this comic book. We could have called it a tie in that is outside of the regular continuity, but we know that there's a built in audience and we know how many sales we'll get if we just continue the secret invasion tie in upon the numbering of Black Panther. Okay, yeah. you know, you're nodding, so you got it. Yeah. I, I, it was hard for me to word that, but you got me. Yeah. No, 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 we got you. We, we get you, we get you. Yeah, yeah, like, they, like they decided <laughs> it's going to be a 14-issue run, but they're going to be done with you and got 10, and then all of a sudden, you know, get different writer for the last couple of ones, which is the different voice, but same story. So, yeah. Yeah. Word. What's yeah, up, man? Yeah, what's up, man? Yeah, I know, man. It's weird, man. And the weird thing is, I would have been here early with y'all, but my power went off and it just came back on. <laughs> well, we appreciate that you're here now. We want to know your opinion on this suit. I liked it. I actually liked it. You know, I was okay. Well, this is interesting. It's different. And I really enjoyed the artwork in this whole story as well. Um, or the, this this final issue, to be perfectly honest. You know, I don't know what it made me pay attention to it so much, this particular issue, but I enjoyed it. What, what's been the consensus? Do y'all like it or dislike it or what? <laughs> no, I think it's a cool suit. I, I just it felt Power Rangery. That that's but it's not that I don't I don't like say that's a negative thing. But I just when I saw it, the first thing I thought was go go Wakandan Ranger. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. That would be great. They will pull it out. They're going to join together. <laughs> Child gets to be the head. Crazy. Uh, T'Challa would be the best Power Ranger ever. Like, if he was ever a Power Ranger, <laughs> well, that make that. I mean, that makes sense, though. <laughs> How did you feel about uh, the whole run, though, Barkley? Yeah, I, I, I like this one. I'm sorry. I'm I'm at the part of the show where I'm just looking at all the clips I have on the side, and I just got to click on every single one of them that are going to be relevant to the conversation. Am I right? You're right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, Mark, Marklin, did you did you like this comic book, or was there like a better Black Hero from DC? Because Marvel sounds a lot better. <laughs> yeah, you can answer. Oh no, Marklin, you there? Okay. All right then. Wait, did you, did you did you hear what I said? I don't know. Oh, I think yeah, the internet yeah, was with me. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> I said, "Thank you." The Wi-Fi trying to reconnect now. So I said, um, "The Wi-Fi trying favorite. to reconnect, huh?" Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Um, you of all people bought into that bullshit. <laughs> yeah. I'm not into it. I know. What, what is it? Y'all got their Rogers or whatever? <laughs> At least we have Spectrum down here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a kid. But I, I, I would say overall, it's beautiful. It's, it's still going to be the priest run, um, probably followed by the coach run because the back end with the Intergalactic Empire of Wakanda. It's like last uh, I said it too. <laughs> 
you know, then maybe maybe the third slot because I know I can't mention Chills. Um, you know, the the other one because you don't even you say the man's name on this show. I think. <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> So maybe in the third position right now because I, I I like Evie Ewan. I've been a fan of her since Ironheart. Properly, you know, I'm wait, wait, happy that wait, she's going to get. Are you are you putting he who shall not be named in in the third spot or did I miss you? No, 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 no. I'm not I'm not going to put him in third spot. I'm not going to put him in third spot. I like him as a writer on other things. <laughs> That's what I was saying. Ooh, you kiss your mother with that mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I said I'm putting Eve Ewan in the third spot right now. Really? So over Hudlin? Over Hudlin? That's what I was going to say. So over Hudlin? You know what? You're right. You're right. I don't know what I was no. thinking about. What you need is time to get your mind right. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, just, you're just ready with it today, ain't you? So yeah, you're right. Hudlin's the third. Hudlin's the third spot, and then Eve would be in the fourth spot. That's how I would do it. You're you're correct because you're not Hudlin. He did big things for Black Panther, but to me, was it was more popcorn Black Panther. You know, they didn't have the nuance that I like in Black Panther. I think um, both uh, Priest and uh, Coates brought to the character. But it was fun to read, and you had great moments, and it sold well, because I know you be on sales numbers, <laughs> um, Chill. I have to. That's all that matters. It's so that I know that these, like, I'm not going to invest in somebody who I know is on a nosedive and... What, like I, my money is finite. My money is important. If I'm going to spend it on a character, it's going to be on the ones that last, the ones that I don't know. I believe. And in. I would argue, like Marco Lynn, that you do need. Am I saying your name right? I mean, yeah, you're saying it right. I, I yeah, you did. You did. You did, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. So Marco Lynn, I think you need something like that. Like you need spectacle with these types of characters, especially when it comes to superheroes. Like you need the big grandiose. Okay. It, like as much as the subtlety is important. Like you know, you need like um, Batman dodging Superman's lasers or dodging Omega beams and and all of that stuff. And you know, like he can't do that, but you're like, but he did it though. <laughs> so <laughs> you need that type of stuff, with especially with like a character like T'Challa, because you need to also remember we are in a fantasy setting. We can't always be dealing with politics and always be dealing with uh, you know political espionage and and all of that stuff. It's just like yeah, we got to get some of that, and then we gotta you know. And then we gotta get we gotta get the crazy stuff. We gotta get T'Challa solos a, a giant wolf, a giant alien wolf, and cracks its neck type thing. I mean, I, and I agree. That's why I was saying I like the back end of Coach Run more because that first one was like very much this is this is African politics and this is our statement on African politics. This is what we're doing. Yep. And I'm like, this is important, but it didn't get exciting to me until they got into the, to the war. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I think the answer that, that was, was awesome. I, I I agree with you. I put Coach second too, so I, I'm not. I disagree with you. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I was a little bit late, but when you were talking about the politics, and then I found it. I love democracy. <laughs> <laughs> that counts, though. I like that. Yeah. Hey man, well, you know, I'm in the states. I just am. Here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in you know, in the U.S., we may be facing that come November <laughs> or come January oh. to the president. So I might, I might be, I might have to be, go go to t Toronto. I don't know, man. <laughs> it's just my, my. <laughs> it's my time to leave. I gotta get out. Uh, oh, you guys are getting dual citizenship? Nobody's coming here. <laughs> <laughs> Can we talk about this later? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I think I'm the funniest person in the world. I'm just like, oh, click on that, click on that. Well, it's not, though. Let's talk about this comic book more. I was in the middle of showing some pages, and I don't think I've shown this one yet. I don't think I've shown this one yet. Um, I was trying to show just how physical he is, and it's here where you can see him do like a double jump in Super Smash Brothers, but you can see mm -hmm. him in the air and the darker of the of the purple that's physically him the smoke yeah. and the gas you know he's just moving so fast that now we can see that oh there's a guy in or there's a body in there oh but if you know I, I think now that i think back to it it may, it kind of makes sense because remember she said he was sucking up souls to gain more power so maybe because of all the souls that he had he now became a physical presence instead of just becoming uh -huh. the smoke cloud so uh -huh. i think that's where it comes from I think I because now he has all these Wakandan souls in him, he's now more physical than spiritual type of thing. That's okay. 
And he says you siphon the spirits. Yeah, he, he sucks. Like, siphon the spirits of the people to uh for your own power and gain. So yeah, I, I agree. And then you see in that, that another page at the bottom, you see the physical, like you see the, the, the dust, and you see the physical body in that too. So yeah. inside of it. So I thought that yeah. That works. Point to Eve. Point to Eve. So it's not an inconsistency. She got us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nope. Just as consistent as his speech. I like the part where he's talking to, and he goes, he goes, move demon. <laughs> 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 to Alinea. Oh, he's back. Ali- that was Ali- funny. Yeah, yeah. Al- Alinea was an afterthought here. Um, yeah. Agreed. Yeah. It almost seems like she did handles I think they, they kinda like the Nikisu the thing. I think like the, the Nikisu thing kind of just got dropped. Like I think that whole crime family thing didn't really go anywhere. Well, I, I think she had a different plan because I mean I got the vibe of like, hey, I'm trying to make this city like Gotham's. You know, I feel like this was very much let's make Bat- Black Panther similar to Batman and let's have this character be his cat woman and let's have these crime families be like the Falcon family in Batman. And I think she ran out of time you sales you know i remember when uh the iron heart thing happened when the gig came and on twitter when she was active she posted like of course i'm a comic book fan and behind her on her shelf was batman a lot of batman stuff mm. i don't think that's an accident I, so no. I'm, I'm with you marklin on that mm. did i say your name right <laughs> oh he's muted i think he's got some I'm muted because I'm driving now, but yes, you said it right, <laughs> and oh, I, I agree with you. <laughs> I, I thank you, thank you for muting yourself while you drive and being considerate, Mark. I, I appreciate that. Hey man, we 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 love the chill show. <laughs> we love the fans. <laughs> um, shoot. Um, sh- are we done with the comic book? Like, yeah, the big fight, the the final blow. That no, no, I didn't even, I'm not getting to the final blow. I'm not getting to the final blow. Alinea joins the fight. Um. And it's flying. And when I saw her in the air, I started going, this character is a new villain. And like, if you can fly, you can be a threat to a superhero because of your flight ability. You know, maybe I don't know how long, how many punches you can take, but let's put some armor on you and we can probably solve that. I think that Alinea may still stick around and be, Mm. you know, maybe the lasting villain out of this. If you get I'm glad you brought that up. Uh-huh. I'm glad you brought that up because I was like, I feel like this is a villain that could pop up again. I mean, it was it was a good villain, and you know, and I, I like to see this explore her. You know, I wouldn't want to see all of that energy go to waste building up this character. And oh, man, you kill you kill me with that, man. It's it's. I understand you focus on sales and a finite amount of money, but sometimes it's about can you tell a good story? And even a story sales, what didn't mean it was a good story. It's plenty of stuff that sold well. Brian, you know what I'm talking about. It's putting stuff that sells well and it's terrible <laughs> years later. But you could that that that's true, but that's kind of the point. Though. Some of the point is that you know, you know people have a short attention span. So when you, you are creating your, your, your comic book, you and you're doing your storyboard, you have to get to that point. We we talked about that earlier. If you don't get to the point, people ha- are not gonna read a comic book like a novel, you know, with your 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 mm-hmm. world building all the time. You have to get you have the main, the main person, the main person, the main hero, the main hero. They need to be in in the book all the time, you know, and you have to get somewhere. And I feel yeah. like they didn't get anywhere. And you can't have pages like this where, all right, boom, the big bad that was been built for so long is Kivu Ma, boom, 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 and then he's reaching out, help me, and you see Captain Ugly flying in, and and a great artwork, of course. This is this is terrifying, mm. right? I was like, oh man, it gave me nightmares. I was like, what the hell? Oh, let me try to take it off. Like, just like Captain like, Ugly. <laughs> well, Captain Ugly, right there. That, that, that got me. I was like, like, like she, 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 she's got to be a villain. Like she can't just be walking around with a face like that and just have a normal life. Like she has to. <laughs> Like if if that was me, I'd have beef with T'Challa. You turned me into this, <laughs> bro. They got to do something with her. Every every writer should be adding. We got mad at feces when he killed. Uh, was it Akili, the uh, Hadzuzarazi member? Yeah. Also, and, like and... it was just like he made Akili randomly evil because like Akili was never that way. 
Yeah. Like, I don't know where this came from. So well, it came, it came from the mind of a guy who write an Esquire article that I don't approve of. This yeah. being the, the opposite of what you're supposed to do, which is supposed to add to the lore and make it so that, you know, when people say, well, you know, this guy's got a great rogues gallery or he's got a big rogues gallery. The size of the rogues gallery is nothing if the characters don't keep coming back. What does it mean mm-hmm. that the reason the reason why we like Spider-Man because of his villains? He's got the Vulture, who we see appear, and Mysterio, who we always see appear, and um, mm-hmm. Electro. Yeah, Hobgoblin, Goblin, Electro, Scorpion, Shocker. Same Every man. 100 Rhino. issues of a Spider-Man comic, and there's been 800 of them, you would have seen those co- those villains return in the Amazing Spider-Man alone. And not to mention Dr. Octopus getting his own spectacular, you know? Yeah. And we and don't we have know, that with T'Challa. The superior Spider-Man is Doc Ock. But I mean, I, I agree with that. I mean, in every good hero has a good role scout. That's always been a T'Challa problem for me i mean you know the flash's rose gallery superman batman you know the justice league as a whole you know the legion of doom is their their villains you know spider-man captain america damn you're right iron man <laughs> who are t'challa's big villains other than killmonger killmonger oh, that's it it's really killmonger and claw and claw and uh who's the one that was like a key bay that from the priest run i think was a good villain for him it was like his yeah, Joker. Yeah, Achebe, no, Achebe, Achebe is amazing. Achebe, 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 yeah. Well, I call him Achebe. I don't know if that's how uh, when I don't know if that's how when Priest wrote it. That's how he intended to. Like in my Af- African brain, I don't know. <laughs> in the brain that I have, that's how I read it. I read it as Achebe. So, um, but anyway, yeah, he's great on mind potential and all of that stuff, especially like with him being an evil priest type of thing that could that could be like a, you know a spiritual connection and all of that stuff and he also had like the whole christian motif going on in the in the priest run so they could do something with that or whatever and i mean there's also the supremacists that were that were a nice like villain group for t'challa because they tried to take think, over wakanda i don't think that any of them are on the same level as being a real villain so like i mean when you you say claw killmonger I, I feel like you you're, you're talking about got the ones that are just epic there and everyone's running everyone knows they still exist all the time they're not going anywhere right you know and a lot mm-hmm. of the ones you guys are talking about are, are, are only good for that run and we need to increase the, his villains that are always there and i think that's what we could do now we could take her and we could base and, and let her be part of you know someone who's always going to be around someone who's always going to cause problems so we could have those th- have multiple stories along no, with these, true, these but I, I think they need to also go back to the, those people that i was talking about as well because i mean coats did he did bring up i think the fenris twins yeah. who were part of like azania and who were part of like the supremacists or whatever and they used the k-word and everything so i was like whoa <laughs> but anyway um yeah i think like when you have a good villain, like writers should look at like a good villain from the past and use them. Like Achebe is just like he has potential to be a Joker level type guy, and like he's got magical connections and everything. So to just leave him to the side and not use him again, that doesn't make sense to me. So that's why, like, if like if I was if I was in charge of the thing, he would like follow shot would be one of his pawns. Like that whole. Voldemort thing would have been a situation a that a Chebe you know, set up and, and all of that stuff. So basically to yeah, to square that circle of the nonsense that that guy did, we I'd make it all a Chebe's fault, you know, to, to build up this guy like this is a this is a prime villain that you need to use type of thing. So uh, I definitely adding more, yes, but you should also cement what's there. You shouldn't just ignore the people that came in the past type of thing. Like Tetu and Zenzi, they should not go anywhere. Like the they came from Coates' run. They're the person they're the people that started the nation under our feet type of thing. If Already they forgot are, that's a problem, you see? But anyway. Just like this villain is gonna be already forgotten. Like this like putting hands on T'Challa, successfully achieving the um, you know, the uh the ex resurrection. What do you call it? Exorcism? This one. She says um, Kivuma feast on this on your soul, on the soul of Bas's Bas, avatar. Bas avatar. Yeah, I remember that was Seish your hunger. Even when you put the word Seish in the is that how you say it? S A T E is Seish. 
Wait, oh, sate your hunger. Is it? Isn't it sate? Or is it say? It should be satiate, from what I know. That's what I thought. Yeah. Doug, she went to school and you and teaches that as at a, at a school. doctor. So you know, doctor no. Ewing. She, we'll if go with she, said. <laughs> she spelled it that way. She spelled it that way for a reason. I think it's satiate. Yeah, who, who am I? Who am I? <laughs> Um, I, I, I like I that, that though. joke though. Before I was making that joke, somebody said something about what did you just call him? Caliber. I referred to him as feces. I called him human garbage. I herpes at one point. Anything but Ron Jidley. He, he, this guy is uh, undeserving of first name and last name. For that run alone, that was a crime against comic books. <laughs> but anyway. Um, and by the way, you got a link to it if you wanted to come and join. Uh, you don't got to be here in the live chat. Join if you can, if uh, you're free. It's right. Yeah. Um, getting back to that panel, though, I do like that because now what Eve did is like she cemented, yes, T'Challa is the avatar of boss. Everybody tries to talk around it and talk about how the Black Panther is not the avatar or T'Challa is not the avatar. Yes, he is. Stop this nonsense of, no, he's just a champion or he's just wearing the suit for the time. He's like kind of associated with boss. It's not, no, he's the avatar. Stop it. <laughs> I like that, yeah. yeah. And, and being an avatar boss opens up a lot of new store possibilities. I mean, look at Moon Knight alone. Moon Knight, that's with, the uh, thing about the Moon Knight. With Dave McKay stuff he's doing with, with Khonshu, you know, I mean, that's a whole other world. The store is to be open yeah, But up. I'm saying like, this has always been the thing. Like, even in the priest run, Oh, uh, we lost to Mark Marklin. Oh man. Anyway, no, that, that wasn't one of those, you know, when you get mad at a guy and you get him out of there. <laughs> 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 Jed McKay. <laughs> I was gonna compliment Jed McKay. I was gonna say, yeah, Jed McKay, the leader of Marvel Comics, because Avengers and X Men, that doesn't happen. Mm. But yeah, like getting back to it, like even in the priest run when he beats Mephisto, he beat Mephisto because he was the avatar of like, and he had the souls of all the previous Panthers type of thing. Like that's why the King of the Dead setup was so cool because they had already set that up before type mm -hmm. of thing in the mythos. And also when we go to that 1980s run um, that was drawn by the, Dennis the Cowan. One. Yeah, the 88 one. Um, he also in there because he is the avatar of Boss. The boss was upset with his lack of action and ends up leading to fighting him and, and all of that stuff. So he's always been the direct avatar of Boss. Like when you become the Panther, you are the direct avatar of Boss and he's been the best of them. It's never been this thing of, oh, no, he's just kind of serving under her. Or even when he got married to Storm, he had to go to Boss and Boss had to approve the union because of his spirit is conjoined with her and he's the, her avatar and even in the other run uh storm worlds apart when mm -hmm. uh, t'challa gets consumed by um shadow king i believe yeah i think it's shadow king like boss is lambasting and you sh and she's yelling at storm and it's like you took my child and you put him in danger with your not with your x-men nonsense and all of that stuff my avatar is now possessed by another man because of you and all of that stuff and then they have i to remember that that's that, that, that. That's a great callback. I'm glad you brought it up. That's a great. I completely forgot about that till you said that. <laughs> I do I remember love, getting pissed at Storm about that. I love, I love Worlds Apart. I thought that was a brilliant comic. I really and wish that's that why you're Storm supposed to have crossovers like more often, right? I mean, this, this is why you need to have them, you know, working together. I mean, especially when it makes sense for the story. Why don't why, I? I just don't yeah. understand why they try to keep everything so separate. There's no need mm. to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, that's corporate synergy. I mean, you got to realize back then, I mean, you know, think about what Dwayne McDuffie and uh, Hutland did. They had a lot of synergy because, you know, uh, McDuffie was writing Storm and Black Panther in Fantastic Four, and Hutland had them over in Black Panther. They had great synergy, consistently across them over. But, you know, now we're on this whole. Well, also, they were I, I, somebody, like, I think they were yeah, true. Also, like, like, they, they yeah, talked true. a lot in real life. So, I mean, I, I remember even. Um, what's this? Hudlin did an interview where he was talking about how him and Dwayne were arguing about how to handle Panther because he was like, Dwayne likes it when Panther has to like overcome things. And Hudlin was like, Batman don't have to overcome things every 50 issues. Nah, I'm making T'Challa beat up aliens and he's killing people. And you know, they're both right. Man, that, that is an excellent idea because you know what I liked about Dwayne, he was a very he was, a, you know, he. I think he had a physics degree or something, you know. And he used to always say, "I hate writing the Flash because technically the Flash should win every fight because the man's, you know, he thinks the speed of thought, you know, and he moves the speed of thought, so he should win everything." 
is what yeah. and when he was on uh, the straight up Justice League Unlimited, he said that's why I saved the Flash for the last story with Lex Luthor. You know, they need uh, Brainiac because they needed him the most in. They needed that power then. Mm. Mm. Let me uh Man, but let me that's a great writer. Oh my god, all right, Pete. But anyway. Let me take it to uh, the comment section and not ignore some of what these people are saying. Trey says, Hey, do you like the new X-Men 97 series? 60 seconds. Talk about the X-Men 97 series. Well, right? I haven't watched it yet, so I haven't right, watched so the original either. I I, I love I, I love first of all, you need to watch the original X-Men 97. I love the art. That's that right. Not all of us are in our 40s. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Damn! Now hold up! Hold up! <laughs> that ain't fair. Throw me under the bus. It's all right. It's okay. I know what I'm saying. Hey, that would say black don't crack, man. It's okay. I'm all right. <laughs> you got that melanin popping. Exactly. This new series looks really good. I like some of the stuff they're doing. I personally hate the the idea of taking Storm's power. They finally show her that she's an Omega levels uh goddess. Like, and they they're pumping her up and they're doing all these great things and then all the next thing they do like four panels at uh, four t- minutes later they pull uh-huh. her power from her i'm like the first time you finally put some some respect on her name with the you lightning the strikes power. turning the sand to glass dude you know that you know that's straight from chris claremont life death you know that i hate it when i saw yeah. it just oh we finna do this story right now come on man yeah, like, i didn't like it then. yo marklin only fans knew about that I mean, anybody who look, man, comic look, books are accessible it, to everybody now online. I'm saying, look, if if it if it ends up with her leading the X Men, I think that would be an okay trade off because that's basically where that's going is that she's going to defeat um, Cyclops in a one on one in a one on one in a one on one fight. You don't even know exactly which Jean Grey is is the real Jean Grey and which one. You don't know what's going to be. You don't know which which way they're going to change it. You know, I hope, I hope I hope they don't do this whole Madeline Pryor. Gene Grey thing. I hope they don't do it. Oh, well, Madeline is going to be one of them. One of them is going to be Madeline Pryor. The question is, is that the one at the door or is the one with the baby? It's going to be the That's one with the, the baby because that, that makes the, the most sense. Baby, I hate that. Then they're going to do the entire run like that and Cyclops is going to have to get defeated. And wasn't all Jean, wasn't Jean dead though when Madeline came through? Wasn't Jean dead? Yeah, but in yeah, this she story, was. Like, she was the Dark Phoenix, so she technically did die. She survived and this... And, yeah, she survived in, in, in this. In, in this, I think it's season three of X Men. The original X Men says she survives via Phoenix. Oh, you know, okay. but in, in, in the original comic book run, you know, she died on the moon, and then that led to all Cyclops and his. Somebody said his crazy whole adventure. Since somebody told me, he said Cyclops was on it after Jean Grey died. He was straight smashing chicks and going places, and he ended up with a chick who looked just like Jean Grey. But that's why it would make Madeline Pryor would make more sense that she was at the door because she escaped from Sinister. So I don't know which way they're going to go with it. But they could go that way and have Madeline, and then have have her be there, and Cyclops being confused and, and all type of stuff, and then maybe that baby still becomes Cable, but it just changed a few things. So it doesn't mean Madeline Pryor has to be the Jean Grey who's pregnant. It doesn't mean it because then you know too much. Maybe they change those things. Um, maybe. I, I also all, I'm saying is that, all I'm saying is that if you take Storm's powers, you better make her leader of the X Men and then bring her powers back when she's leader of the X Men. That's all I know. I, I, I like hate it because it's going to be like I mean, three episodes without, without her there. You know, like so she's not going to be it's essential in like but uh, probably two episodes. They're probably going to do two episodes before they bring her back. My favorite, my I mean, favorite X Men. You're going to take out immediately. Like you will finally mm-hmm. give her give her respect. You finally going to show how powerful she really is, and then. You take her powers away. I was like, "Come on, man! Really? You give Cyclops his respect finally. You know all the all the negativity we give him. You finally show how powerful he really is. And you're starting to do it with Storm, and you take all of it away. And I, it just pissed me off. You know. I mean, I mean, I, I agree with you, Bart. But you know, like I said, it is a comic book story. I mean, you know, and that is what's going. But the good news is that Storm has a lot of good stories, especially now. These past couple years, L. You and been writing their storm has plenty of stories from the pool from now, you know. So I'm like, hey, you know, and it was well, some better stories. I, but I, I, mean, I would like for her to get a solo. I would like for her to get like a strong solo, a strong ongoing solo. Like she's always having feats in other people's comics, and I, I, I don't like that because I'm like, yeah, it's called Resurrection of Magneto. When somebody's looking for it, they're not checking, thinking it's Storm, and then she's doing something in Magneto's comic book. 
but yeah the stuff has been amazing it's just been like man put it in a storm comic book title it storm have it do omega stuff in the storm comic okay. book. all right but to your point both shield and i mean that's your sword and uh x-men red are really storm books i mean she's obviously lead in both of those books she, I argue that she does she have a storm though there is one storm. But it didn't mm -hmm. last long. I mean, it, it, I think the kids would have a good writer on Storm. That's that's what misses Storm up. Yeah. There's a Storm series. I have the thumbnail from that video I did on the bottom on the right side. There, yeah, one of the nine titles that yeah, they're Wolverine's launching. Wolverine got another one. Good God! <laughs> did you say Wolverine got another one? As if he should yeah. have one. No, I'm just saying, like you know. I mean, Wolverine a Wolverine movie is coming out. I mean, a Deadpool movie Wolverine is coming out. It's going to be a Wolverine book. We already know that. Like, that's that synergy we're talking about. Hey, I, I, I just got Wolverine. a movie. I love Wolverine. Oh, you I have just, a lot like, of friends who are Wolverine. Awesome. Yeah, he, he's yeah. all right. Uh, you voted yeah. for Wolverine some of, my, twice? some of my best, some of my best friends have a healing factor. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. Just, I just didn't like the anti-Wolverine sentiment. I just I brought it up though to show you, like, like there is actually going to be a storm titled mm -hmm. series. And it's not happening in the past, and it feels like it's going to be relevant to the X Men. I now, I just want to know who the writer is. That's that's the, that to me. That's going to make a, a huge difference because when Storm has a good writer, she is is off the off the chain. When she has a an, a so so writer, I mean, you know, well, you never know. I mean, that's every that's every character though, <laughs> you know. So that's I mean, true, you can be, you I mean, more with Storm, like, is you? I feel like yes, she's been disrespected yes. so much so often. That, that's that's the issue with it you know like all the time everyone doesn't understand how powerful she really is and how you know she's a goddess and like where she's been and she's been doing this since she's a teenager and like it's so much things that she's been through you know? and it could be this writer it, because she's done with black panther she's joining the x-men usually the x-men guys the, uh, the the writers do more than just one book if you look at percy x-force and wolverine remember when hickman was doing like the giant size books the main X Men books, event books, they double up. So, I, I know she's got a busy schedule and she has a real job. Maybe doing two comic books on the X Men is within the possibility. Yeah, yeah the realm. You talking? You talking? You talking? Ewing or Ewing? Yeah, yeah. yeah Ewing. I, I mean, not Al Ewing. Uh, you yeah, know, yeah. The, yeah. The e I mean, I, I could, I could see that, but you know, it depends. I mean, how far ahead they are on scripts. You know, like I mean, has she already turned in all her scripts? For she has exceptional X Men, right? The Kitty Pride, um, uh, White Queen book. So maybe she's already turned her first six scripts, and maybe they, you know, because you um, like you say she has a real job. She's a you know. But isn't a, isn't like Chicago. the solicit yeah. isn't wasn't the solicitation the whole um what was it the whole political she's going to be an ambassador? No, for... that's a rumor that she's going to run for office for one oh, of the. Senators. Oh, okay, the so rumor. Okay, yeah. cool, cool, cool. All right, so we don't know. We just know she has the mohawk again. Which we I don't know, but then imagine. the same rumors. There are also rumors that there's going to be um, a, a dark Fe a phoenix book. There's rumors that there was going to be. Uh, so some rumors came true. Is what I'm trying to get at. Hello, yeah. everywhere. There's, no, because I mean, on, on that thumbnail you showed us, there is a phoenix title. I I did see a phoenix title, so I guess that yeah. came true. Yeah, one of the phoenix's books, and then the NYX series, which. I don't know what they're doing, but it's like it's like they, we have these proper we have these names, these brands. We got to reuse them. No one look at but what you know the first I didn't see? Sorry, I, I, there's there's no new mutants book, is there? I see. I saw X Factor and X Force, but I didn't see new mutants. So that was like a core no. X Men no. book back in the day. Yeah, maybe the members of New Mutants will be members of the X Factor title, and it will be you know that'll be that. Yeah, maybe. That's the problem. Is that the problem with X Men though? They have so many titles and there's so many runs, and they have the same characters doing different things. So when you have writers doing different things, like you have, as I said, I said at the beginning, there's times where characters are both dead, alive, <laughs> and in 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 yeah, the yeah, like at, at some, some point, time. at some point, like Old Man Logan came through and took Logan's place after Logan died of adamantium poisoning right. or something. Which was good. They did kill. They remember it was the death of Wolverine when he got covered in antimanium, and that's how he died. And then Jeff Lemire was writing Old Man Logan, you know, an actual old, old man Logan ongoing. And he became that was during the X Men Blue and Gold era when Kitty Fry was running the school, right before um, the, the Cohen era. You're kind of skipping the Matthew Rosenberg thing. 
I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to nitpick. I was just, you know, just for the sake of saying that. But like, we're, we're well, done. Anyway, like my, done my, my X-Men knowledge discussion. is always tangential. Like, I, I just, I know all of them, but I don't know all the details. Cool. Anyway. I think there's going to be X-Men time because I'm going to be invested in the X-Men again. And I'll be loving to talk about it. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You weren't invested in the Krakoan era? Um, when Hickman left, so did I. I mean, they, yeah. they had some good stories well, post Hickman. Well, you can't make, you can't blame him because Hickman is one of the great, the best writers of all time. And then to, when you walk he, away from the franchise, you have to say you have to worry about what's going on. So I have to respect that and understand why people don't want to follow what's going on. Because I'm honestly, I, I was worried uh, after X Factor. I, I was worried about after Un- Uncanny. Like when you when you have different writers, I feel like you have to check them out before you just go all in on them. Because if they don't right. respect and they don't keep the same story going on, you keyword story. There was a beginning act, a middle act, and an end act. When Hickman's story was abandoned, why the hell would I let somebody who didn't even start this get to finish it? And and, and you're expecting me to pay four dollars monthly, or more than four dollars, but you're expecting me to spend money on this too? No, I'm gone. This is not the original intended uh, uh, plan. I don't feel satisfied. Everyone who's complaining about Fall of X number three, I feel so um, validated in my abandonment of the X Men line since Hickman left, and I'll join them. Uh, right. I mean, there, there, right. there, there, there were some good stories. I mean, I mean, the Hillfire Gala stuff was good to me. Um, I, I, and really, the character I'm worried about the most, the two that I know Storm's going to book is what's going to happen with Sink and what's going to happen with M. Sink by far got probably the most development he's ever gotten. Since the Generation X, um, Generation, um, yeah, it was Generation X. That was the name of the team. That team. Yeah, you gotta watch my videos that I posted like two weeks ago when they made these announcements because I go very okay. hard on sync, I go very in, and most of my audience already heard me talk about it. Yep. The short version is we we wasted all of that development on sync because he is not one of the featured members of these new teams, and I'm like, fuck. I don't care. But you can't that. say that. You, I mean, but you, it depends. I mean, if characters get popular over time. Why can't I say that? I mean, that? think about Uncanny X Men and X Men are out and the teams are there. And no, we have black characters. There's a good one named Ao, but I know I what mean, tier she is. And I know what writers have been thinking of her since she was invented 15 years ago. And I know what the new writer comes after this will think of Ao after. Oh, yeah, yeah that's Ao, whatever. And I'm yeah. like, why are we. Building up a character, I mean, like, think, putting, yeah, but 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 you'll never get good care. I mean, characters' popularity change over years. I mean, when I was when I was like a kid, like a little kid, the thing was like one of the most popular characters at Marvel. When he had his whole book called, um, was it? Oh, you remember Marvel Two and One? Never that was one matchup, the, 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 the matchups, whatever, uh, team ups, the Marvel team ups. What yeah. happened? Yeah. But what happened to the thing? And what happened to Sync isn't what ever happened to Thing. Thing was always appearing constantly in your Fantastic Four comics. Sync is absent from the cover, and that is disappointing. That a black character was getting love, and all of a sudden the elevation... He was climbing the ranks, wasn't he? Wasn't he a top 20 he character was. in Jerry Duggins? Is yeah. he going to be a top 20 character anymore? No, because I saw 20 characters. He wasn't one of them. I still say we have to, if we, we want, I mean, characters can change. It, it depends on the writers. I mean, if you get a good writer, I mean, and I'm just Grant oh, Morrison's example. Grant oh, Morrison was known. Do we have a, do we have a problem where there's a lack? Sorry, Brian. Do we have an issue where there's a lack of representation in the X Men at the top tier? Of course, they have a thousand mutants and from all over, but if I'm talking the top 20 characters, it's a whole bunch of white people surrounding Storm. We got sync to get treated importantly, and as this character is elevating and being more important, and all of a sudden he's he's gone or he's not featured, spotlit in a deserving place. That is a level of like like um uh, dropping the ball on elevating a black character. That's my problem with it. Which is which was my concern, but I say him talking. I mean, I felt like I saw this years ago with Bishop because you know when Bishop first got introduced yeah, during the end of the Claremont role, two wrongs don't make a right. Then, uh, say what? I said two, that two, two wrongs don't make a right. You're going to tell me about how this happened with Bishop, it happened with manifold, it happened with all these characters. Yeah, it's wrong. Yeah. It's only Storm who's a perennial character, and it, it, it hurts more in X Men because what it's supposed to, it's supposed to be. Um, X Men is supposed to be about you know everyone you know. People that have been treated bad, they are, are coming up and be able to be, be working in society and be you know uh, uh, 
elevation of, of, of who they are. And, you know, that really goes with the civil rights movement, really goes with the women's movement, and it really goes with all those things. So that's what X-Men's supposed to be. And then when you look at them, and then you realize the top 20 characters, as you say, have no black people really in it besides Storm, and then you always downgrade Storm, who Storm is Omega level mutant. No, Brian, no, Brian. There are going to be black characters in their top twenty of the of the Tom Brevoort era. They're just going to be different characters, black characters than it was during the Jordan White era. Which, in the long term, how the hell is the black character ever supposed to get popular and hot and elevated? I mean, but, but how does Storm get popular? I mean, I mean, because I feel like something was at the beginning. <laughs> but, I feel, but, I, but I but I but no, I mean Storm was a it was an add on to the X Men. Remember, she she wasn't a rich X Men. I'm saying you have to constantly create new black characters to see what they can sell. But, but eventually, in 1975 and since then, she's been used by Claremont, by uh, every head writer. I too. mean, but, Cla but but Claremont wrote the book for 27 years, though. That's what I'm saying. He, he, you know, he, that's, that's why that's she was used. Work, though, but and it worked. Right. Oh, I'm just out coming so, in. How y'all how guys doing? Hello, hello. Well, what's up, Dre? <laughs> uh, I'm I'm gonna have to check out in like the next ten minutes because I gotta be somewhere. But um, yeah, just on the X Men talk, I've only cared about Storm and Wolverine. Outside of everybody, outside of that, I've been like, yeah. So, but uh, I I hope that one day Sink and Prodigy and Bishop can actually be on the level of a Cyclops or a Gene or. Because I found those characters much more interesting. Like, I find, like, Sync and Prodigy way more interesting than, like, Archangel. I'm like, I don't care about Warring Worthington or whatever. <laughs> Give me Sync. I, I mean, but that, that's a, Warren Worthington is a character that's been reinvented several times to make him more popular, too. I mean, you know, where he started and where he's at now are, are vastly different spots. And, I mean, you know, and my fear is we'd be like, well, if this character's not popular, we're going to stop making new black characters. And I'm like, no, don't do that. No, we Keep don't need new, new black characters. characters. We need a, a black character who's in the top 10. I don't, it, when, them system. being new isn't the answer. Because what's the point of a new character when they're toiling down in the bottom 50? Key, key character, Ayo. Let me point at that. She was created for Generation Hope. Uh, it's one of the five lights. That's a new black character. I, I remember right. when AO was created. Yeah, and AO and, had, has, has and put around a new black different. character. Did we need a new black character, or did we need a black character to be on the tier of Magneto, Rogue, Wolverine? But, you know? but I think we, we can. I, I feel like they're two separate issues. I mean, you have to have a writer to say, "Hey, I mean," which I know they're not going to do. We have a writer to say, "Hey, I'm going to commit to using these black," or Marvel say, "I'm going to commit to using these five black characters in all our stories over a certain." They're not going to do that. I mean, because it depends on the writer and who the writer likes. But the now, what we need is more people like us doing, to become writers. They are doing diversity castings. It's just being diluted because it goes to this character, that character, that character, that character. And if they would have just kept the sync push, you know, in wrestling term for push, I mean, if they kept the progression of elevating the character with of sync, and you and that'll be your black fulfillment, then we would have had not just three years of sync um, being heavily featured. We would have three more years or however long Jed McKay goes. And then the audience goes, okay, you know, for six years, Sync has been treating import importantly. Maybe I learned his name is Everett. Maybe I can get somewhere. But when the black spot, quote unquote, is now going to AO, I'm like, yo, I know you guys don't care about this character. I know you just needed black and woman. And that's why you put her on this team. And she'll be gone with the next I mean. And, and what I'm curious box. about, I mean, I'm curious about the writer. I mean, because I feel like that writer come in and say, hey, what characters do you want to use? I think they honestly asked them that. And I wish, you know, yeah, maybe we can. Hey, Mark Lynn, even if that's the case, I'm sorry I keep interrupting yeah. and cutting you off. But no, I mean, you know, I mean, it's fine. I mean, I, I, I want to get to the bottom of this issue because I'm trying to find a solution to it. So, I mean, I, I see your point and I'm like, I'm passionate about it, but how do we combat that? The solution is to just continue and understand how to empower rather than letting writers choose, well, who are your favorite characters? Oh, really? You like Ao? Cool. Yeah, that's when you got to go chill the fuck out. Um, Ao was one of the bottom tier characters. And we but know she's that. only but why what makes her bottom tier because she hadn't good stories. No, nah, like, like, you know, she's new. Like the thing is, as Chill is saying, the editor's gotta come in and say, These are the guys you have to use. And Sync has to be on that list, and he has to have this much panel time in this many stories, and he's gotta be like he's gotta okay. Do, I got yeah, because so, we were doing this thing a few years ago where we were fighting racism because we were elevating Sync and Everett Thomas, and we were making him part of like the top six care. Even when the X-Men elections were up, he still maintained his spot. We we are we're doing a sync push because Black Lives Matter and sync sync sync. We are I don't think it was because Black Lives Matter. I think it's because I think it's because Hickman is somebody who read old school comic books and remembered sync yeah. being a cool character Generation X oh, and yeah. he got killed. And he was yeah, like, I like out the time period. It did still work with the time. So like, if yeah. you have the you bring the character back and you it works with the time, then you continue it 
if you if you keep the, Yo, keep the push going. Hickman did a great thing, and he cared about Monet also, and he did a thing. He and did. He Jed, did. I'm sure Jed McKay was moved just like Hickman was moved by uh, by Everett. So was he with Ayo and Ayo Ayo, Ayo you know yeah. the, the girl Temper. Ayo. Ayo. Well, Temper now you're correct. That's what they call her now. I'm sure Jed McKay was just as moved as Temper. And if we okay, we found out the source of why they're pushing these black characters. It, the problem still remains that here comes a new writer who's gonna like another character, and, and you're gonna drop the old be, one and then bring another one. On. And it's, we almost have to lose one the game. We're just shuffling. But and, gonna, and, that, and that's the problem right there. You have to lose one to game one. Notice, that's the problem. I'm going to notice Beast and Cyclops, and I'm going to notice that Wolverine is, is a constant, and so is Gam and, 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 and Rogue, and I'm going to say, ah, there's never a perennial black character with the exception of Storm. And when Pepe Larraz draws his 700, celebrating 700 issues of X-Men, the only black character he noticed, he, he remembered to keep was Storm, or he cared enough to keep with Storm, that's because Storm matters, and that's because everyone else is like an experiment that a writer maybe cares about for a little bit and is shuffled out. It's not like we haven't been getting black characters on our X-Men. We have been getting them all over the place. Bishop, M, uh, everyone we named right now. They, it's just always spread apart so that we could never get one guy into like a top-tier position. Yeah, I mean, that's going mean, to be again, on the editing. I was going to say, they did the same thing with Bishop in the 90s. Bishop came in. He was part of a storyline, which was a great storyline. And then afterwards, yeah, you know, we'll we'll pop him in here, here and there. You know what I mean? When and it's I, convenient for us. Yeah. yeah, we just when it's convenient. So that is, I think that is the biggest problem that you that you're facing. With Shill is right, and I can see all you guys aside is that you have characters that in here that are in here that are not mainstays. You know who the mainstays in, of the X Men. I think uh, uh, when I was listening in my car, I was getting food, so I was listening and and you guys were talking about the original X Men. You know what I mean? Which is you know Angel, Iceman, Beast, Cyclops, Marvel Girl. You know that those are the original X Men, and then they start adding additional people. There, 1975, Giant Size X Men number one. You bring in Storm, nice. Nightcrawler, Colossus. You start having these men. And, and what what I hear what you guys are saying. Those guys were mainstays from 1975, and you're going into the 80s. And now you're starting to have these other, uh, okay, so we, we're not doing this in here. So we'll put Marvel Girl or, you know what I'm saying, or or this person, we'll put them over in, in, in X Factor because we got to tell this story over in X Factor. The X-Men is still the X-Men at the end of the day. So Jean Grey can still go back to the X-Men and nothing changes. What other black character besides Storm, and to a certain extent, Bishop is that happening to? And that's the question you have to ask. Bishop, the, the longevity with Bishop is my my word. I mean, Bishop had his own run, so that I mean, he did. Just, and in the, the popularity, and and it's almost like what Chill says about the popularity of John Stewart's Green Lantern because it hit the cartoon. No, <laughs> because it hit the cartoon is why that character's popular. Yeah. And that character, we all knew Bishop. I found out about Bishop because of the cartoon, because my parents wasn't buying me any comic books. It was like, comic books, nope, not buying you that. You know what I mean? So I found out about from the X-Men 92 cartoon. Mm -hmm. That's, a, you know what I mean? And now I've got a familiarity with the character. What other character is like, okay, we're going to jump from the, the pages of Marvel to the cartoon. And making that person the main. I mean, and you made the great work. point about John Stewart because yeah. that cartoon is what saved. Yes. And Dwayne McDuffie intentionally did that to save that character from getting killed in the comic books and made him a mainstay. So, well, what other, I would say Sunspot what other? is the only other black character I can think of that's a mainstay in, 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 in mutant titles because Sunspot was in the New Mutants for twenty some years and then yep. of the X Force. Yep, he ends so, the comic. He ends that. He ends that original run. Uh, you know, so 100 new, issues, you're right. Uh, a new minutes ran 100 issues. Sunspot yeah, was in probably 98 of them. He was, he was in what was it? Sunspot leaves in issue 100, yeah, yeah, or so 90, he, 98, 99. But he was yeah. probably in 98 of the books, yeah. Can yeah. you name 10 Marvel mutants who are popular and more featured and bigger than Sunspot? Yes, could you name 20? Maybe close, it'll be close. He might be in the top 20, maybe. Mm. Yeah, I, I can name 15, I think. Like, but yeah. Uh, yeah, just so, I guess, because I got to I gotta run soon, so I'll just end on this. Yeah, um, to e-viewing issue 10, 
yeah, it was it was a it was an okay finale. I think she did a great job with the run that she had. I did I do wish she had more time. And I hope that the next person who takes over the series is gonna take T'Challa in a better direction. In terms of the X-Men stuff, yes, please start, you know, taking take one black character. Don't take 20. Take one, make them on the level of storm, and then take another one. Do it one at a time. Don't do it 20 at a time because every time you do this, they drop them every time. Yeah. I mean, it's the same with the other, it's the same with the other ethnicity, like even Warpath. Warpath was doing something in X-Force and then boom, it's gone. Now, where did he go? <laughs> I like that guy. So yeah, one at a time. Don't let's let's go one by one, not I just 20 by 20. By one, but you you want to make sure that you don't lose what you have every time you add one. Every time you add one, you yeah, don't have to exactly. lose everybody. Like, you know, if, if I'm going to make someone important that they don't go off to this way to the wayside because I add another one. Like because you're not just replacing a spot. You're becoming an important character. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, gents, it's been so much fun chopping it up with you. I got to peace out. Thank you for having me on, Chill. And uh, I guess I'll see you next to Chala time if I can make it. <laughs> peace yes. out, Buck. I'll right, see you later, Buck. See, um, I'm gonna give you guys a story. So I go, I'm like, my bad, chill, because you was getting rid your lips was moving. You was like, oh, all right, here he comes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. But no. So I go to my local comic shop. They did not fill any of my stuff because the guy lost my whole entire book, my whole entire what I what I what I what I buy. I literally buy almost eighty dollars worth of comics every two weeks. No bullshit. <laughs> no bullshit. I'm talking about from Thor. I'm talking about from 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 Thor Venom because I love the Venom. Venom run is awesome. Fun, fun Venom run. Deadpool. It, they lost all my shit. So I didn't get I didn't get uh, my my Black Panther number nine and number ten until. About 20 minutes ago. Because they lost all my shit. They lost all my shit. So did you just speed read it? I didn't, I, I didn't get it. I was driving in the car. Where I was listening. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to react to these pictures. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I don't. Is he? Uh, I like the claws, though. I do like the claws. Oh, yeah. uh, is that Kafuma? That's look like. Uh, okay. All right. I'm going to have to. Re- I'm going to have to, I'm gonna have to read it. Suit. Show him the suit one. I want to close out the X-Men talk because I just decided it's going to be trimmed and put in another video. <laughs> um, well, cause when Buckmeister Cool was finished with saying the uh, many characters, we don't need many characters. Um, when when importance is uh, like annually swapped from black character to black character, when we look back at it 10 years down the road, we're going to look back and we're going to say, oh, all of these black characters exist outside of the top 10. And they're outside of meaningful positions, impactful positions for representation. What are the benefits of representation? If yeah, we got black characters in unimportant positions, that's what the, that's literally not the point of representation. I want them to stand side by side and be just as relevant as characters like Jean Grey and characters like Kitty Pride or Kate Pride, as she wants to be called. I want. I wonder if they're going to revert that because. I saw Eve Ewing write Kitty Pride a bunch of times rather than Kate. But then I don't expect her to be reading. But it, it, it depends on the writers. And I like what y'all said about it. Maybe it should be an editorial mandate, you know, which I don't know how you enforce it. Because that, to me, if I was a writer, I said, well, hell, you can't tell me what characters I want to use. But then again, you know, it's a job you're you paying me for. Batman, so I think you can. T'Challa, you need to have that. You know, you're going to use Batman, you're going to have Bruce Wayne. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, Marklin, I'm pretty certain they said you got to have a black character on your team or you're doing a racism. And he's like, okay, who do I like? Oh, I'm going to call Ayo Temper. Yeah, diversity. And that's just, <laughs> they, they don't know how to empower and they need help. I mean, we need to lead a diversity. So I'm saying, look, man, you know, if y'all want these characters, if you want true diversity, you need to make sure these characters have, you know, standing stories that people can latch on to for years and elevate their prominence, you know, not well, just make a one and done. Well, I'll, I'll I've been telling you this. for the last 20 minutes. Yeah, right? I, I even say this because I know well, one of you guys uh, mentioned Claremont was writing for 27 years. Mm-hmm. Claremont wrote some of the best stories in X-Men history. And not only that, in, in New Mutants, there are stories from Claremont that all of that matches up. So you had prominent characters in there that you told these stories to so it can be done. You have to write them uniquely for the instead of the way that Claremont did diversity was so impactful because he told the story and the character so happened to fit 
what was going on within that time period. It wasn't like black character, be uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, prototypical black character, you know what I mean, or lesbian character, be what lesbian is in the 80s. I don't know, big hair, or a biker outfit, I don't know, but be that. It wasn't forcing some, it wasn't forcing the character into a box, it told the story. And then he allowed the characters to be able to grow within the story. Now you start to see the diversity within the story, not the character being prototypical. And the story is based off of the character. The character is a black, gay, lesbian, uh, albino, and you know, and all this. You know what I mean? Like it is not all these. Yeah, let me check out the story. Tell the story, and then let the let the audience be able to figure out, okay, this character is going through this because they're this, that, and the other. That's how it worked. So that's why I love Claremont's story so much. But doesn't that come with you have uh, longevity, you have job security, you have all those things, but you know that you're going to be around. Exactly. Claremont had that. I mean, if somebody told me, said, man, if, it, if it had not been for Claremont, they said X-Men would have been Inhumans. If it had not been for Claremont, and he took a liking to him, he made them. I, I mean, <laughs> technically, that's the same thing with Christopher Priest. You talk about Black Panther, Christopher Priest, I mean, Black Panther was done. They were, they had no other stories to tell. Ten years later, they said, okay, we're getting ready to dump these guys. Deadpool, Black Panther, all these guys. Christopher Priest, you're at the bottom of the barrel. What can you do with them? And he became one of the greatest Boom. writers in Good writer. history. One Good writer. Got, got a character that everybody, that was, people were based on them with a, a whole other level. That's what I'm talking about. A good writer with a with a character can can turn a character's whole trajectory around. That's easy to do in a one off, and not in the X Men ensemble. I think an ensemble thing you have to continue to have longevity. Uh, when, yeah. when you have when you have in your uh, single character, it's easy to do it with your single character one. And when X Men is just so many characters that you could be dropped off at any point in time. I mean, but it's then, not like Justice League you know, when you have you know. A but possibility then, of seven. If, if, but if you go back, even if you go back and look at X Factor, you know what I mean? You look at, you know, it's an adjacent story. You know what I mean? It's part of the X-Men universe, but you got this over here and you have Storm Lee, Team A and Team, you know, Team Blue and Team Gold. You know what I mean? You have those. They still did it right. Because to me, the 90s was the, the, the 80s and the 90s was the best time for X-Men writing in comics. Going back in, once I got some money to, and folks telling me I, I ain't buying you. you nothing, I buy myself. You know what I mean? I agree with you, you tell man. me, yeah, I, you know, I De just definitely the eighties and nineties. From like Follow the Mutants, <laughs> from me, from Muna Massacre to Follow the Mutants to Inferno, yeah, and execution, I mean, executioner, Erno, executioner, oh my storm. god. Uh, uh, you look at uh, um, God, um, God, me and my brother was just talking about this when uh Charles Xavier got possessed. Uh, onslaught, the onslaught saga. Onslaught, they yeah. Ever do that on X Men '97? Oh my! And they can do it right now, which I think they're leading up to with Charles being, which or with Charles Mind being in the Shi'ar Empire. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That his mind is fragile. You could, if Magneto's the leader of the, you could do onslaught, and onslaught is goddamn awesome. That's what if I told you that uh, Cyclops is going to be an evil at the end? You could do that too. I think which that's Cyclops is, is Cyclops is Cyclops, evil Cyclops is one of the greatest. Remember when Apocalypse took over Cyclops' body? I, I remember that. Or when Cyclops got militant. I love that. He was when like, he you know, militant, that's exactly. yeah, it's yeah. militant Cyclops. Yeah. That's really the you know, if, if you look at it, 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 it's almost like when anybody talk about Fantastic Four, what they bring, who's the writer they talk about when they talk about Fantastic Four now? They talk about Hickman's run. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Jonathan Hickman's run. You know That's I mean? when I became a Hickman fan when he was on Fantastic he's Four. A, exactly. He's a, he, right. He's a monster. So just think of someone grabbing that title, like and I said, in the 90s, when Fabian Nasia was writing uh, Deadpool. You know what I'm saying? It was Fabian Nasia and I um, can't think of the other guy's name. When they were writing Deadpool, they took Deadpool, who was, you know, more straight laced, more assassin. And made him break the fourth wall, made him do goofy stuff, had him going on these events. That makes the character. Now everybody's like, oh, I'm a Deadpool fan. You know, those kids in the, in 97 that was reading Deadpool was having a great time with that because of that. Got a question, guys, a question, though, with this X-Men 97. Where do you think Aurora is going? Well, so man, you know they took away her power in the comics. You know yeah, what I mean? I mean yeah, we, They're gonna bring her. You know her powers coming back. Yeah, and it's gonna happen in two two issues. But do, where does she go? Does she go 
Does she go back to Africa like she did in um? Or does in she go to like? Kenya? Does she end up going to Kenya? Or does she end up going to Wakanda? What if she goes to Wakanda. That's and that's why I want to know. What, what do you think if she ends up going to Wakanda? That'd be awesome. I'm not gonna lie. That'd be awesome. That I'm not it and. I did a story, I did a video, and I misquoted, I forgot there's a brief cameo in Black Panther in the 97 comic. I mean, in the, in the X-Men 92. He is, that's the first appearance as a cartoon on screen was actual X-Men. You know what I mean? But speaking lines, it was, a you know, uh, something else. But that would be awesome if, you, if she went to go get the help of Wakandans. And then, I mean, you know. have that, the connection, you know, you. She's known to child forever. I mean, there's so many things <sighs> that could work with that, but she also could be end up going and be before, back to Kenya or, or she Forge. To, yeah, would Ford that mean that? Like now would it be recasting T'Challa because they'd have to have a voice actor for that? <laughs> I'm sure they don't have a problem having a voice actor for the T'Challa. That you know is the actual yeah. live recast, which we're probably still gonna get sooner or later. <laughs> but ba Balin Skull will be recast. Just saying. So we're at the page where. Uh, by the way, uh, great X Men talk, everybody. We're going to go yeah. back to the Chala stuff. Subscribe <laughs> to all of us. Thank you. Uh, in the comments, someone just wrote, "Could we see T'Challa in X Men '97?" That's what that's, that's what Dre was just so, telling us. Give us, give us, awesome. a, give us one issue, one one, one uh, episode, one, one episode. T'Challa, you know, re encourages Aurora. Like they know you. I've I've known you for, for for all these time. You've never been a woman that will sit this down. You need to go back. You need to go figure this out, and then that allows Beast the time to go ahead and find a cure and work it all. I would let I would let you right before that. That's a long ass bus ride to Wakanda. <laughs> That's all I'm about. She got on the bus. Okay. She's going to go on a plane. She going to go, she gonna go through back of the plane. <laughs> and that's why I think she ends up with Forge. But yeah, you know. oh, she's going to Haiti, knowing Marvel. <laughs> Black man. Oh my god. Uh, no, let's do that. Yeah, let's not do that. <laughs> so, because it's the final issue of the comic book, because it's the final issue of the um, of the uh, of the series, the believability that T'Challa just got sucked out, you know, <laughs> pause. Or, uh, <laughs> I was I was threatened. Yeah. You were worried the next page was going to be like, <laughs> what are you guys going to do now? Yeah. Uh, and, and, well, I mean, but, I, but I felt like it ended on a high note. I mean, T'Challa's back on top, or at least he feels like he's back on top. He's like, hey, I'm going to go home, you know? I mean, that, that's what we want. And then we had this blood hunt coming up, right? The blood hunt, uh, T'Challa issues. Hold up. Yeah, that, that's going to be. I'm sorry, though. I need to, since I'm just now getting my stuff in, got dang on comic book shop. Let me try to catch up where you're at. Well, I'm I'm at the page where, back at the base of operations, intergalactic Mbaku is talking to like, hey, we can't get him back. Where, what? Why don't you use the same technique that you used to get all these other guys back? It's not working for T'Challa. What's the matter? I was like, you guys are about to rock slide T'Challa. If you remember what happened to the mutant. You know, because you can't kill anyone anymore, but they... they you they put him in suspended animation. That's why I thought, they are they going to literally freeze him? I'm and going, him oh ice? God. I, I knew that wasn't going to happen. You knew it? Nah. I was worried. I, was, nah, I ain't worried about that. <laughs> That's what they should have done in the movie, damn it. But whatever, as I digress. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> um... That's not that's not that's not the worry that happened. So he has like a memories and all these images that Chris Allen wrote, and it's everything he's been through over the last ten issue. Ten that's issues. great. That's great artwork, though. That's really great artwork. I'm definitely you know, impressed by artwork. Yeah. yeah. So so I'm gonna be the guy who just goes it's cool fancy collage here, but whatever. Like you took a whole but, page. Of but you see that come back to us, King. I'm on the page you're on now. Come back to us, King. Bold letters, King. That's yeah. at the top right corner. Oh, come back to us, King. And then later yeah. on, they call it. They, before that, they called him Emperor. So yeah, there's they view him as the King, and that's nice. That's that's cool. Mm. He's recognized as the King. Yeah, good good stuff. I was worried because it seemed like his life flashed before his eyes, 
this last little period that we saw flash through his eyes. What are you guys going to do? So when I turned the next page, I was like, bro, am I about to just go crazy? Am I going to burn something down? <laughs> I knew you would be like that because we kind of have the same concerns every time we talk about this comic book. Mm-hmm. But that is not what happened. Alas, T'Challa was able to, to, to return, you know, because he was enough. You know, T'Challa just mustered up all the strength pop back up and his eyes were purple when he when he returned and a very yeah, i un- like that you like the eyes were purple yeah because it's, it's it's almost like the it, he's abused with boss and if you look at it it's i'm looking at it right now and it looks like he has cat eyes <laughs> like it's kind of wild oh, it's exactly so it was boss yep, yeah taking over uh, remember taking and they, over. They kind of Said that he's you know he, he's the avatar for boss like we like, you know like we were just talking about with Buckmeister but yeah that that was very cool. Sorry, so 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 yeah, King, uh, we're all happy about that. So the the thing is though, like the final blow wasn't. There's been build up to other things. Remember when Thor in the Infinity called Infinity series got the hammer, threw it, it revolved around the sun, came back, and just ran back in his arms, and it went through some monster. Like, the buildup was there for the final kind of blow. In this case, he has a line. And, of course, you know, I, I've complained about this, but they have way too much dialogue during, like, a punch. You claimed you fight for Wakanda as you siphon the spirits of its people for your own power and gain. And then, you know, all in one shot. That, you know, the, 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 the claws to the eye of Kivuma is what got him. There was no extra special powder. Can you guys describe this final blow to like, I don't know, improve it? Because to me, it's just like, a, oh, that's all it took to take, take down Kivuma? Huh. What am I missing? What is the mystical part of this fight? Of this of this blow? I mean, I don't know. I, I felt it was kind of, I mean, I, was, I did feel it was kind of rushed, but you know, hey, I enjoyed it. He came out on top. <laughs> It was rushed, but I felt like the, the purple eyes said it wasn't just T'Challa doing this. Mm-hmm. He was able to do this because Boss was behind him. So, like, she was doing it through him. So, he his it was his punch, but it was really her power. That's kind of how I, in my mind, figured So, it out. because he believes in himself, um, and he believes in himself now, but man, he realized Boss is behind him. Now, he's super powered enough to, to destroy this enemy It was Boss. Boss. It was Boss power, but he was the avatar of boss power it was really boss that gave him the power to do it and that's kind of how i saw it you know more than anything what page was that when boss gave him the power is that all you're reading oh, it's, as simple as his eyes exactly it's as simple as the, the eyes is his eyes were purple it was cat like and it was like boss brought him back like through all this there wasn't t'challa being able to be super powerful and, and bring it up i thought it was boss saying no you're my avatar yeah. i'm giving you the power to to win this this battle keep in mind is nothing compared to me you're gonna go be my champion and that's kind of how i saw it and re- and remember we need to have boss needs to be on the same level uh as Kanshu in other avatars so for i mean or, or other gods in in that pantheon of, of of marvel gods so for this i'm i'm reading it for the first time this reminds me of an anime you know how you do the final punch in an anime and they start you know, literally monologuing, but it's all in slow motion. Do you know what I mean? That's what it reminds Like, if, if I was to see this, they would have put it in animation. They would have had to do it in an anime style to give it that impact. You know, the slow motion turn while he's digging his, you know, his uh, his fist into his eye. And, you know what I'm saying? As you siphon the spirits of the people, your own for power game, boom. Do you know what I mean? That's yeah. literally an anime pop. Uh, Pop. So I kind of like that because that's what it brought me to. Now, if you're not in the anime, you'd be like, "What the hell is this?" It. <laughs> oh boy. I mean, I, I definitely like agree. I'm seeing it in a different light. I mean, I definitely agree. I mean, it's like, hey, you know, that was the wind up right there for the for the knockout punch. I agree with you on that. You know, I mean, it ain't like like you just think of Mike Tyson doing that. He's getting ready to throw his famous uppercut and be like, <laughs> "You like the like." <laughs> <laughs> if you step with the spirits of the people in your power, boy. <laughs> uh, and your time is over. <laughs> That's what's coming on Netflix to Jake Paul. Oh, 
Here is the reunion. Well, Mike Tyson and uh, Jake Paul. It's, it's, it's coming on Netflix? Yeah, it's going on Netflix. Oh, hell. Ooh, I'm excited <laughs> for that. <laughs> now, look at that. They're having a party. I hear that I owe you, Niobe. All right. So when he says that, that he owes Niobe, is that because Niobe was the guy who got him out of the the states? The animation. Yeah. And it wasn't bossed? Could be. I mean, but, you know, he, I mean, that's the one that, you know, that had the personal talk to him. Say, hey, you know, you're our king. Come back to, you know, come back to us, our, our king, my king. Hmm. You know, and that was the push he needed. You know, somebody from a city that he hadn't really connected with until now. They, you know, they, you know, they were like, oh, we don't really mess with you for real. And he's like, you know what? You, you've proved yourself to be our king. And, you know, we're going to rock with you now. In, in the, that panel, he says, you know, uh, Niobe, Niobe is the one who said, I might have, I might have something. We don't know what he did. But he did something that might, you know, charged it up. You know, but I don't think he gave him, gave him the power for him to beat, you know, keep him on because he, he, he always had the same power. So I think keep him on was still the reason why this. I mean, keep him on that boss was still the reason why he was able to kill keep him on. But uh, Neo Neobi did something to get something started. Like he had, had an idea. He put extra power into it to maybe put the connection to the ancestral plane stronger or something like that. And maybe I'm just adding it in because it's only so long of a, a panel, and I, I want it to be that. <laughs> it, it I mean, but that's, that's what the panel, panel made you think. That's good. I mean, I, I felt something similar, you know. I looked at this panel where that happened, and I look at the back, and I can see Samari. And as I said, a bunch of times, this is uh, that was it, really. And you had to squeeze it into the T'Challa meeting Yobi panel, also. Where we can get this huge chunk of words that go, "Hey, you saved me from soulless suspended animation in a space tube." I did the same for you. What's that between? Fr- uh, I'm reading the wrong text box. My mistake. Uh, it's it's hi Samari. Hey girl, I'm digging the look. Hanging around in the cemetery is fun and all, but can we leave? <laughs> Gotta go. That was that. Remember that was like a huge plot of this entire. Ten- only that, that was an issue and a half. <laughs> the whole thing between them. That's a lot. I thought it was huge. Uh, we close out back at Faiza's. Whatever, man. Yeah, they're stimulating the economy. It ends with a flying the kite moment, as I would expect. <laughs> or a I am enough moment, as I would expect. And then, the kite. <laughs> you know that that's how the Photon series ended. That's how the Ironheart series ended. With like you know, on a good upbeat kind of moment, All right? Yeah, I mean that happened. Yeah, I mean I agree. I mean I, w- I would agree that's that's consistent with her writing. But you know, she, she at least she leads the hero in you know on the on the upside. How many jumps there were in this comic. How many times it just like we're like, you know, now it's a few days later, a few hours later, immediately, a few weeks later. So it's like she wanted to get to a point, but she couldn't risk it being another page. So she had to put, hey. This is what's happening. Like, there was more directing you in time periods in this upcoming than it was in any other ones. I agree. Yeah. I, I think she, and she had to. I mean, uh, obviously, this is, it tells you that she did not think this was going to be only a 10 issue thing. It's, exactly. it's obvious, no matter what anyone will ever say, she did not know. And she yep. probably found out because all of a sudden all the action started coming up at eight, nine, and ten. All the action started happening. Yep. So somebody came in her office with the wrap it up box. <laughs> you know, the sign is real simple, B <laughs> says wrap it up. Wrap this black panther shit up, B. Hell <laughs> oh, snap. Let's get the action going. <laughs> you say wrap it up like Dave Chappelle, wrap it up. <laughs> they came in her office. Yeah, hey, wrap that gavel up, B. <laughs> They told her to wrap this shit up. You are going on another title that we wasn't planning on, but you're gonna write it. Okay, yeah, wrap this Black Panther. We we trying to make him a vampire or something. We're wrap this shit up. <laughs> Whatever. You know what I mean? Now let me ask you guys this: Do you think this run is going? It, it, do you think this run is going to be sim? I mean, I'm sorry, the next run, the Ultimate Black Panther, because that's they're really. We're, they're going to be more invested in Ultimate Black Panther right now. Do you think Ultimate Black Panther is going to be better than this run or surpass this run? Yes. 
think it's done but, more but, in two issues than it did in six issues with. But it, but it also has the advantage of being a five dollar comic book with an extra five pages. It also has the advantage of uh, Stefano Caselli. It has the advantage of retconning everything, and there's nothing in the past that matters. The, right. Which I mean, it's the advantage of Brian Edward Hill being the writer. I mean, you know, yeah, it's, it's a hot book right now. New. Yeah, because this but is do brand I care? new for him. But do, but do I care about it the same way I care about Black Panther six one six? No. This, this is what matters to me. T'Challa's story continues in Black Panther Blood Hunt. That is way more important than the ultimate T'Challa who we don't even know how long the ultimate universe is going to be here. We saw the first one implode after 10 years. And I, again, guys, I don't live in the moment. Just because it looks like ultimate T'Challa is the thing and it's and, and, and he's, he's all he's, he's the stuff. So were some other ultimate characters. Or 2099 characters. 2099, yeah. Because, I mean, they did have a a Black Panther 2099. That was one book. And that's all you got. One book. I buy all the variants of Black Panther 616. With the Ultimate books, I'll buy one copy and I'm good. And I'll come over here and I'll talk about it. But I'm not going to be buying all of the issues the way... And it's not the same love, you know? Yeah. (laughs) So I'm sorry to throw throw a, par- a poop on your parade. Oh, but you did. You mean the sign does say to wrap it up. Appreciate all of you guys who've jumped in. Does anyone have anything to plug or talk about, Brian? Hey, you know, Spoiler Kings. We're on Mondays and Thursdays. We're doing a lot of different things. We got a lot of cool things with Invincible being out. Uh, I did an interview with a vampire thing that we're going to really be talking about pushing that uh, pushing that out. We'll go over Ghostbusters of Frozen Empire on Monday, and we're going to talk about Halo, the Halo series Halo. on Monday. I'm going to do a panel on the Halo series because season two was ten times better than season one. So if you guys get a chance, check us out on Monday. Absolutely, and then right before the Spoiler Kings come on, it's the Blurred AF, of course, with me, Mika G, and Bluminati. We have no idea what we're going to talk about, so we just we just make it up on the fly. So just come in and figure out what the hell's going on, and have a good time with doing it. But the Dre Mac Show is going to is always seven thirty Central Time, eight thirty on the East Coast time. You know, so check me out in the morning tomorrow. I was going, I might do it tonight. I might do it tonight. I'm giving away two hundred dollars, hundred dollars for my memberships, hundred dollars for my subscribers. So, uh, if you see a notification, if you're a subscriber, Brian, <laughs> you got a chance to you got a chance to get cashed after hundred hundred of my money. And if you're since you're a member, you have a chance to win in on the subscriber one also. So that's what make it all. Awesome. Let's go. So, so yeah, I might uh, that's be doing Central that time here. favoritism. Ten <laughs> o'clock Central Time favoritism. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Marklin, Marklin, you're Central Time Zone too, aren't you? Look at you. I'm, I'm Central Time Zone. I think the only thing I got going on, you know, I'm over at Black Comic Lords now. I hadn't done any of the shows with them yet. I had to try and work that into my schedule, but I have some um, some reviews coming up on the BlackComicLords.net uh, website. So we're just waiting to get those published and get them organized. I think I have at least at least three in the can right now, and I need to write some more. <laughs> All these comic books I buy, I got to find time to actually write reviews on when I read them. <laughs> Hey, real quick, did any of you guys know that Wesley Snipes had a comic book out? Uh, Say what? Yep. I had seen it in my yeah, comic shop. Yeah, he has yeah. a comic book out. Uh, yeah, I seen it I, in my I, local comic shop. Yeah, I got yeah, it. Yeah, it, um, uh-huh. it. I mean, it, I mean, it, I had it, it's on my list. Of, it's from Wet Not Publishing. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, Exile Wet, by yeah, Wesley Snipes. Yeah, yeah, Exile. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Did, did so, you? The issues so are hard for me to find would, here in Alabama, so I had to kind of go to Atlanta and get them when I can. <laughs> yeah. So uh, they didn't have my comics together, but they had Wesley Snipes comics. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm a I'm gonna buy those um, <laughs> myself from another. I'm not gonna buy them from the local comic shop because they they kind of jacked me up. I, I literally spend like eighty dollars, you know, every two weeks, damn near, on all the comics that I get, and they really flubbed up this time. You know what I mean? But so I'm going to buy Exiles from somewhere else. But I wanted to kind of plug that because I thought that was cool that Wesley has his own comic out. So, and then of course, Chillmonger is going to be coming up because the Wesley Snipes uh, of the uh, of the group here when his comic drops, you know what I'm saying? And, and one day. somewhere in the next, in the, somewhere in the near future. <laughs> Ooh, one day. Then that's just going to be the new 
thing, all right? <laughs> and you know we follow you. You know we're going to all be there, so can't wait. Thank you. Thank I can't you. wait to review Chill Mug herself, so I can be like, oh, I'm going that? hard. <laughs> <laughs> so he couldn't make the character this <laughs> I guess I'd be interested. <laughs> you, see, you see these guys and their unsupportiveness? They could have been part of this, but it's just me and you. Hey, okay. what you People should like, comment, I'll, and subscribe, right? Like, comment, and subscribe, yes. <laughs> Appreciate you guys. Appreciate most of my panelists.